Mm. Fellas, fellas. Fellas, fellas. Okay, okay, okay. For, 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 for. Hello. Yo, Monte, how's it? I'm okay. How are you? I'm good, good. Looks like everyone's microphones are on mute and they don't realize that. Let me let me just ask them to unmute for a second. Hello. Hello, how are you? Hey. How's it? Yo, Yo Osman. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Osmond. <laughs> okay, how's everyone? How's everyone? How's everyone? Alright, it's not bad. Good, good. How's it? Ah, uh, all is well. All is well. All is well. Yo, there's more people than expected. Damn. Yeah, too many people. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, dang. Okay, so let's just wait a couple of seconds so that we can start. Um, yeah. What am I doing? Okay. Ed, Ed. What's good, Ed, people? Okay, okay, okay. Come man. What is popping? Nothing uh, much. Nothing much. Good to see you guys. Oh, <laughs> hey. I just said what's popping. Uh, <laughs> I think we just have to start with uh, the people who are here at the moment. And then anyone else we have to join. Has to join, we just join along the way since I don't think we have so much time. I think we have like 45 minutes or so. So, hello everyone. Um, Tabula, uh, can I just ask you guys to to mute your microphones for just these couple of minutes coming? Can you just mute your microphones? Okay, yep. So, hello everyone again, once again. Um, I'm Taponashi Sebastian, okay. I'm a type designer. And just today, I'm just going to be demonstrating to you guys uh, one or two things about type design, how to get started in font creation, how to make your first font. And I'm sure most of you, for, for most of you guys, it's going to be quite easy because uh, you've got some super lekker dope skills already up your sleeves. So for most of you guys, it's not going to be a problem since you already know how to draw and stuff. So without further wasting your time, um, in this process, I'm going to be using FontLab 6. I'm going to be using FontLab 6. So just after, after the item, I'm going to drop the links to, to the softwares so that you guys can download as well. And you can use, so I'm going to be using FontLab 6. Uh, it's quite easy for you guys, since you're starting out, it's quite easy for you guys to start drawing in Adobe Illustrator at first. But, but, a big but, uh, drawing in Illustrator, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's amateurs, you get it. And the other, another thing is that uh, Illustrator doesn't have uh, the full curve control um, strength to, to, to draw uh, tiny things like fonts. Okay, yeah. I'm sure we always have these, these funny battles of Adobe versus CorelDRAW or uh, 
I'm sorry to disappoint you guys, but Adobe and, and Coil are nothing compared to FontLab in terms of KF uh, controls. Okay, that's why uh, you can't edit or create fonts in Adobe Illustrator or Corel Drop. So without, without wasting your time, let me just open up FontLab and share my screen right away so that you guys can see the item. You share screen. Hmm. Okay, guys, so if you have any questions, okay, if you have any questions, can you just post them up in the chat? If you have any questions during, any questions or suggestions, you can just post them up in the chat during the, during the session. Okay, let me just admit a few people. Admit one. Okay. So this is PhoneLab, PhoneLab 6, okay? And here I've already opened, I've already opened up a font. I've opened up Mutapa. So this is the general uh, UI design of the, whole, of the whole software. And this is like the home page. Once you open a, 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 a new font, this is what you see. So you have an outline of all the characters here. If I just scroll down, you can see all the characters that are in the font. Like that, 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 that. Those are all the characters that are in the, are in the font. But when you open up a new font, it's like this, it's plain. It's a blank canvas, okay? There's nothing to see. And it's all plain. And here I've got, uh, it's in the, basic Latin uh, writing script, okay? So it's your A, B, C, Ds. That's what you are seeing right now. So when you're creating fonts, um, there are different methods of approaching it, of approaching the whole process. And just like any other design process, the first thing that you start with is uh, your brief, your design brief. So, and likely for, for us, uh, for type designers, most of the times you, you are the one who gets to create the type brief on your own. You don't need a client for that since most of the work that you do is something that you do on your own. So in your type brief, uh, you generally talk about uh, what your font uh, is all about. Like how many characters is it going to have? Why are you creating the font? Are you creating it for, for display purposes? Like is it going to be used on posters? Is it going to be used on um, billboards? Or are you creating something for text or something for, for digital UI? Is it something that's going to be appearing on tiny screens like uh, the Apple Watch and stuff, okay? So all of those factors, they matter because whatever you decide to make your phone for, it's going to be, it's going to affect the, the, the overall design of your, of your characters. For example, if I'm talking about Mutapa, Mutapa was created for mainly display purposes. This is not a text typeface, typeface, okay? This is not for typesetting books and all. So it's meant to be, to be read at huge sizes, okay? Preferably at um, 18 points and above because it's a display typeface. If you go anything below that, it's going to be looking super weird, okay? going to be super weird. Okay, uh, drop font, how long did it take you to make that? Okay, so for this one, from Chapa, uh, it took me around two months to make. It took around two months, on and off, on and off. Two months, on and off. But then, yeah, as I was saying, uh, it depends, you have to, so starting from the brief, that's where you get, that's where you get, uh, to determine what your font is going to be used for. So without further ado, let me just, so when you're starting to create a font, uh, let's say, okay, you've got your brief now, 
you now know what you want. You want a text typeface, you want a display typeface. Um, you want a display typeface, you want a text typeface. You've now decided what you want to do and you start then drawing the characters, okay? You start drawing the characters. And when you start drawing, uh, there is something that you need to note, okay? There are certain characters that you have to start off uh, designing because they are the ones that determine uh, the rest of the characters. So for example, the first ones that I normally start with, okay? You start with the N. I start with my brother N, okay? So let me just open up another font here so that I can be demonstrating how all these things. Okay, so if you see an N, okay? The N is the one that determines everything. Uh, the N determines uh, the, the shapes and character forms of every letter that is that is vertically dominant. So if you check, it's the N determines the M, the H, the U, the I, the J, mm, the R, and then you've got your O, which determines the E, C, D, B, Q, P, and goes on and on and on like that, okay? And then you've got your X, which determines uh, your X side and all the characters that, is, that have uh, diagonal strokes. So the X, V, W, okay? And then one of them that stands alone on its own is S, because this one is unique. It's, it's on its own, okay? And this is one of the most difficult letters to draw out of all of them. So when you're starting to draw, like I said, you start with the N. So from here, I look for my N. And you've got here your glyph window. So from here, I'm not sure if you can see this clearly. I think the guides are a bit faint. So you've got your cap height at the top there, and you've got your X height, and you've got your baseline there, and you've got your descend height somewhere there. Okay, so when you're starting, when you're starting to draw, when you're starting to draw, there are various methods that you can use when you're drawing. Uh, and most of them, they, they are just the same as the ones that you know in Illustrator. Um, so for example, the one that you're most familiar with is the pen tool, okay? It's the pen tool. And in type design, we call it the Belzier tool. Okay, the Belzier tool. So it's as simple as how, how you just do it in, in, in Illustrator but with a twist, I'm just going to demonstrate how. I'm just going to demonstrate how the major difference between Illustrator, uh, basically between uh, design, the general design softwares and the font editing softwares. Okay. So there we have our smart N. And as you can see, it's like really thin, 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 okay? You've got your anchors there, ta-da, ta-da. Okay, so this is your N, is it? This is basically the skeleton of your N, the skeleton of your N. And uh, this one here, we've got two types of curves, of nodes. This one is a curved node, which is put on uh, a curved outline. And this one is a square, 
curve, which is put on uh, when you've got a transition from a straight curve to a curve, from a straight outline to a curved outline. Okay. So once you've got this, this is, I'll go to my power brush. And then I'll just say this, yeah. Change that. And if we just press space by here, you can see that um, the, the field outline there, it's now, but we're not done it, okay? We're not done it. It's as simple as that, okay? It's as simple as that. It looks so, 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 so easy. It looks very easy. But, 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 a big but. As you can see, uh, it's a bit heavy towards the, around this area, okay? On the joint, it's, it looks very heavy. So what you need to do, what you have to do now is you have to flatten the glyph so that you can edit the outlines separately. And then you just have to play with these with these nodes so that it looks proper. And you clean up your okay, let me just explain something here. Okay, so what happens in type design is that um, when you're drawing your characters, okay, when you're drawing your characters. You have to place your points, these points, okay? These points, the curve points. You place the curve points at the most extreme points, okay? Of the curve outline. So you have to, you have to draw like an, you have to have an imaginary box, an imaginary box within your letter or on your curve form. You have an imaginary box, okay? And wherever the curve, touches the box that's where you put your points so for example on this one you just have to have a point here and here only on the curve and then this one is not supposed to be there so you have to delete this remove that get rid of it and then you like that So it's basically just like your, uh, like your pen tool with a twist, okay? It's just like your pen tool with a twist, a very powerful pen tool, because here you can control all these nodes properly. Like that, and I put my smart in right there, okay? Looks almost good, almost good. It's almost good, it's almost good. So, okay, I see you guys in the chat there, okay. So, um, this is just one method, one way of, of, of trying this, okay? So I'm going to delete this, I'm going to delete this. Sorry guys, I'm going to delete this. I don't like it, I'm going to delete it. So I'm, I'm going to show you guys another method of how to draw. Another way of drawing is by using basic shapes, okay? Using basic shapes, so rectangles. I'm going to use rectangles to draw an end. Okay, just wait and see. So there I've got my rectangle, drag it to the other side. Ta, I make this smaller, like that. Okay, ta -da. Then I grab my knife. Okay, the, cut it there, cut it there. Get that. Then I drag this. Hey, you come here, put him here. Okay, looks funny, is it? It's a funny N, H, N, something like that, I don't know. And then you, oh, oh okay, and then I'll get my pen too, then I'll just add another point there, and add another one there. Then, like that. Double click this and turn it into a curve. I'll put that, yeah. 
double click this, turn into a cave, put it, yeah. Okay, so when you're designing fonts, guys, when you're designing fonts, it's not, uh, you should think of it as if you're doing sculpting, okay? You should think of it as if you're doing sculpting. You're more like shaping, shaping your, 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 your letters, okay? So it's like you're doing the funny sculpting thing, those funny things, okay? I don't know what they're called, the chisels and stuff, okay? So don't think of it as if you're drawing and stuff. So once it's like this, it looks funky. It's my funky end, it looks funky, yeah? And then if I just double click that, turn it to a smooth transition like that, smooth transition. And then my anchor points, and straight them like that. And then this one is all like that. And then that one, like that, that one, like that. Grab it, drag it. Okay, yeah, the wrong thing there. Like that, like that. Two, 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 and then like that. And then you just grab, so you just keep on playing with these notes until you have your perfect, not perfect, but until you've got your good end, like that. So already, as you can see, I've got my end there, it's shaping up nicely. Is it? Uh, looks funky, but it's okay. Carry the, get that one, drag it to that side. And there you have a, your other end. That's another way of drawing your, your characters. I've drawn using the shapes. And once again, I'm going to delete it. I'm not happy with it. <laughs> so I'm going to delete it and there. Vanish, gone, disappear. Another method of doing it is your traditional pen to way. Da, like that. Da, 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 da. Right, I put the leg. Da, da, da. Like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. And they have got my solid end, okay? That's my solid one. That's my solid end. And then if I just double click on the uh, on the nodes there, double click, you turn it into a curve. And then, so what happens with these curves? The trick here is that all the curved points, okay? All the curved points are always either at 45 degrees, 90 degrees, or 180 degrees, okay? And that's how you get the perfect curves, okay? So if I just double click it like that, and then double click this one, 90, double click that one, 90 then this one can be there at 45. And that one is all. Shift, so if you just press shift, it will go to automatically shift to 45. And there you have it. You've got your, your other super swift end, okay? Your beautiful end there. And like that, nice end. Okay, and then from there, let me just fall in love with this one. And then from there, you go to the other characters. So I'm going to close you off. You then from the M, N, you go to the M, okay? And then you just paste the N there. Paste the N. Make it smaller. Because the M is generally small. The M is not directly two M's, okay? It's a bit smaller. Then I just drag it out there and I put my M. Simple is it? Boom, magic, it's magic. And then 
from the N, I go to the U. U like that. Then I just flip it, flip it, flip it, flip it like that. And then I have to make sure that it is an overshoot. Okay, I have to make sure that it is an overshoot because this part here just is to extend a bit below the baseline like that. And that's what my smooth looking you, you like that. And then from there, I go to the edge. Same thing. I just paste my N and make that big taller. And the edge just goes just a bit to the cap edge, okay? And as you can see, that side is not, it's not straight. Yeah, like that. And I put my edge there. So already, from all these characters, it, I've put my N, M, U, H. And can you just look at those? Just look at them. How beautiful they look. Just check how beautiful they look. They look so nice, is it? And so the trick here, guys, is uh, when you're designing fonts, the reason why you start with these crucial characters is that you build harmony between the letters, okay? You build harmony between the letters. That's why letters, that's how letters look uh, beautiful together. And that's why uh, fonts like Helvetica, Helvetica, yeah, Helvetica, are so critically acclaimed because they, 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 they look so coherent and everything just looks so beautiful, isn't it? So the trick here is just in making sure that there is harmony, okay? Making sure that there's harmony. They say that the font is a what? It's a beautiful group of letters, okay? It's a beautiful group of letters. It's not a beautiful group of words, but beautiful group of letters. So you have to make sure that each and every individual letter relates to the next letter, okay? Otherwise, if it doesn't, then you have a super terrible font. You have a super terrible font. So moving on from there, I'm, I'm not going to draw all the letters because I don't think of the time to do that. But then moving on from there, we go on to the O. Okay, we go on to the O. And it's going to be super simple for this one. I'm just going to draw my circle. Make the circle bigger, like so. And the thing is that um, the O is slightly wider than the N, okay? The O is slightly wider than the N. So I'm going to get my N here, Control C, then Control V, just to measure. Yeah, that looks good, okay? As you can see, the O is bigger than, it's, it's wider than the N, okay? So that's perfect. And then I'll just create this and I'm going to control C, control V. I'm going to paste the control T. I'm going to scale it, shift out like so. Okay, and I've got my second, I've got my second uh, O in the middle there. But as you can see, it looks flat, okay? So I'm going to change the direction, the curve direction of this. So this is one of the major differences, okay? This is one of the major differences between um, designing in Illustrator and, uh, and in Font Lab. So what happens is that a font is a piece of software, okay? A font is uh, a piece of software and it's not a static draft. Uh, Graphic, okay. It's a piece of software. So what happens is that all these node points, okay, all these node points, they have data behind them, okay. They have data behind them, and this is the data that tells the computer where the font is or what is supposed to display on the screen, okay. So for example, as you can see, I've got two circles, but then if I show the overall outline, it's just a flat, solid circle. But then if I change the direction of all the nodes here, okay? If I reverse counter like that, you can see it's 
you've got your nice looking all now, the one that you love, is it? The one that we all know. And then basic principles, yeah. Uh, geomet geometric fonts, okay? Geometric fonts are not actually geometric fonts, okay? So a font is not actually a perfect, like the O's are not perfect O's, okay? They're not perfect O's, as in the verticals and the horizontals weights are not the same, okay? The vertical weight is always uh, is slightly slimmer, okay? Slightly slimmer than the uh, horizontal weight. And also the O, the O weight is also must be wider than that of the N. So here if I check the size of the N, the N is 109 units and this one is 100 units. So it has to move inside, okay? They just to move inside. So if I just click on those notes, da, da, da. If I make it bigger by 115. And on that side, same thing. This will be bigger than 115. Okay, like that. And then top part has to be slimmer, okay? And again, I'll have to refer to my end day to see the measurements. The top part is 83 units. 83 units. Now I have to drag it upwards. Two, 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 83. 82, 83, 84, 85, 86. Same thing here. Grab all of those and bring them down. To 83 units, 83, 84, 85. And there you have it. You've got a perfect row. Same perfect row. And there's overshoots as well. So adding the O into the mix. I have to see if it if there's any harmony between the, the M and N O N O N O N O N O like that. Looks okay to me. Mm, just a little bit. Eight one eight two eight three. Yeah. Then they again drag it down a bit. Okay, like that, perfect. So if I check, yep, this. Mm, it's too much down there. So as you can see guys, uh, typeface design is a game of attention to detail, attention to detail. You have to be super attentive to detail, like for days. So and all, perfect. Mm -hmm. And then from the O, you can get your letters like the P, so P, I get the, then I'll grab this stem from the O, from the N, sorry, then I'll just put it there. Oh, we've got our super nice looking P, is it? looks looks super nice super nice and then we drop this down to the descender like that then i'll just move this in oops not that one you move this one in grab that one drag it inside like that You know, drag my points like that. Then I'll just move this on a bit. Yeah, the two parts looks awesome. 
and then we just do the same for this bottom part here. Like that, like that. Super awesome. Super awesome, super awesome. So there you have it. You've got your nice, your nice P already. Super nice P, is it? Beautiful. Uh, I love this one. And then from the P, you get your Q. You get your Q, B, P. Q, B, D, sorry, Q, B, D. So like that, control V. Flip it, like that, flip it, flip it, flip it. And then B. Mm. Get it, then you flip it. Then you just move it up or stay. And you've got your quirky B, okay? And then the problem with this B, once you flip it, is that as you can see, this idea, if you look at the outline, it looks as if it's about to move away this this bottom part here okay it moves like it looks like it's in it's, it's in movement it looks like it's moving that bottom part there and what you have to do now is you have to flip this on its own mm. exactly like that and your b looks nice okay then your d Like that. And you've got your D. Simple like that. Simple, easy, easy. So it's a matter of just paying attention to detail. So already, as you can, as you have seen, from the N we got the M, K, and the U and the H. And from the O we got the P, we got the Q, we got the B, we got the D. Okay, so as you can see already, um, mobi, mo, 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 time to type a random word here. You can already see that there is uh, a certain level of cohesion already within within the characters. They look like they're from like they're from the same family, is it? Except perhaps maybe the O. Maybe the O is a bit. Uh, it's a bit. It's a bit out of place. It looks a bit heavy because of the verticals there, but it's fine. We'll continue. So there you've got your B, D, and then from the O again, you get the C. From the O, you get the C. So you just copy that, paste it in the C. Make that longer. So as you can see here uh, on the side, there's a faint, um, there's a faint outline of the O, yeah? Cause uh, when you're actually designing in phone lab, it shows you the cousins, they call them cousins, okay? It shows you the cousins of the, of the letters. So for example, the C is a cousin of, of the O, okay? So it shows you the O there so that you, you, don't, you don't get lost somewhere designing something which is wild, okay? So from the C, the, our C, we need to turn this into a super cool O, okay? So get my super knife, cut it, super knife, cut it, like that. 
and like that join it like that ah looks cool it super cool see but i'm not going for that so i'm going to delay that delay that point there meh looks weird uh meh So I'm just going to drag these and make sure they are straight. Make sure they are straight like that. And then if you drag it down, so you see these are some of the most difficult characters to draw. They are quite a challenge. It's quite a challenge to draw a C. Although you've got a starting point already with the with the O, but still it's, it can be it can be something else. So they like that. Ta. Bring this down like that, Ta. and it looks looks awesome. And I just have to bring this down inside a bit. So already I've got my C there, okay? Um, so C, O, nice. So if I just, I'm just testing it out to see how the letters look together. Yeah, looks okay. Looks okay to me. Looks okay to me. And then from the C, I'll use the C to get the E. And then with that, I'll just delete that and here we're going to make a very interesting E there. Oh, yes. I'm going to make an interesting E. A funny looking E. No, no, no. So already uh, you go down like that. And then we take this down like that. Then you just try to control the kills. Mm -hmm. Like that. And then one of the things that you have to get is that uh, once while you're designing, it's just a matter of experimenting with different different uh, types of letter forms and stuff, because you never know what you might what you might come up with. Okay, so it's just a matter of just trying as much as you can to experiment as much as you can. So they we're getting our funny E. Looks okay. Looks fine to me. Looks fine to me. Looks fine to me. I don't know how it looks to you guys. But that looks okay. C E. C -E. Yeah, looks okay, is it? Looks fine, looks okay. And then the next item I'll be looking at uh, from this is the G. Let me just make the, or let me do the A. 
and then now move on to something else. Let me do the A and move on to something else. So again, starting with the A, let me get from there. Just select this, uh, select the P, copy it, control C, go to the A tab. Then I'll just make this shorter. I'll make this shorter and then grab my knife. Okay. Uh, something happened there. Okay, it's fine. Then grab my knife, cut it like that, and drag that on there. Okay, the A is there now. La dame. Okay, fight. It's fine. So I've got my A now. Okay, I've got my A now. Okay, so the next stage for me, okay, let's say you've designed all these characters. Okay, you've got your super, you've got your cool looking characters now. And then the next stage that you'll be looking at uh, is fixing, uh, you'd start looking at would you need any other characters? within the font, okay? Any other uh, alternate characters? Any other alternate characters from... Any other alternate characters? So with the A, for example, with the A, for example, let's say I need a double story A, okay? Let's say I need a double story A. Let's say I need a double story A. I'll just, on this A, go to Glyph, duplicate Glyph, and then they have got my alternate Glyph, okay? Put my alternate Glyph. And then this one has to be different. It has to be different. It has to be a double story A. So I'm deleting everything there, okay? I'm deleting everything. And then I'll go to my N as the starting point. I'll go to my N as the starting point. And once again, um, two, two, like that. And the double story A, guys, is the A that is, uh, okay, let me just design it so that you can see it. So like that, like that, that's the top part, okay? That's the top part of our A. But it looks funny right now, it looks funny, it doesn't look proper, it doesn't look proper at all. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's bad designing there. That's bad, 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 terrible designing, terrible designing, terrible designing. Mm. Yeah, it's shaping up, shaping up nicely, it's shaping up nicely, it's shaping up nicely. Okay, let's just get it over and done with. The, the, I'm sure you're getting an idea now of what I'm doing. That's the double story A. That's the double story A. a. Mm. And then turn that to curves, turn that to curves, turn that to curves. So what I will do there is delete that.
say that and then now pull that down move that there oh like that like that then it's a matter of just making this straight make that straight make that straight like that then make that straight again like that then yeah it is So if I just move those back in, select that and just move that down. We'll move you here, pull you outwards. Move you down, pull you inwards. Move you upwards like that. Like that. Okay, I'm biggest. I'm biggest. Damn. I think uh I think we we we're now we're now out of time with the item. But damn shit. Oh. Okay, guys, so if, if you have any questions so far, if you have any questions so far, can you just post them now? If you have any questions, can you just post them now? You can just, you can just uh, unmute yourselves. If you have a question, then you just, you just ask. Or you can just write, you can write, just write a question in the, in the chat. You can write a question in the chat and we can talk. I think someone just asked um, if Glyph has a, that, that cousin view. Yeah. Cliffs. Oh, okay, okay. So if you're using glyphs, glyphs doesn't have that cousin view. It doesn't have the cousin view. <laughs> it doesn't have the cousin view. But uh, you, you can try check. You can try check in your settings because I think the last version of glyphs I used was like uh, really old. That's like last year. And I think they have a newer version now. So I think you can check. You can check with the newer version if it is cousins or not. Any more questions? I okay, so I, I wanted to, to to demonstrate something just before we we uh okay. Let me just let me just share my screen. And this is the fun part, okay? Hey, this is the fun part. This is the fun part. What I wanted to demonstrate with this A. So once you've got your, your uppercase A, okay? You open your upper to, uppercase, not your uppercase, your double story A, okay? That's where the fun begins with the open tab features, okay? That's where the fun begins with the open tab features. So you've got your A there. I've got my default A and I've got this other double story A, okay? Default A and double case A. So you have to write open type code for it, okay? Some code for it. And then you go, you have to visit your features panel. Um, where's the features panel? Yeah, I hear you. Come here. You have to visit your features panel. <laughs> the 
features panel, features panel, features panel. And then you start writing your code, okay? You start writing your code. So I add my feature there. And the one that I'm going to be writing is the alternative code. So A out, A out, like that. So I'm going to sub substitute A, okay, with by a dot out like that boom magic happens compile it now watch the magic guys watch the magic watch the magic watch the magic watch the magic so if i turn on my features here and then turn on the alternative features okay Oh, let me not turn them on it like that. So I've got my A, 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 A. Mama loves me. Okay. Yes, like that. And then if I'm to turn on the features now, boom. Changes to the what? To the other A. And this is exactly what happens when you're using um, when you're using Adobe Illustrator or when you're now using the font in any in any other software. When you turn on the open type features, okay. When you turn on the open type features, uh, that's how it changes. Okay, so that's what makes it happen. That small little that tiny line of code I wrote is the one that makes this thing happen. Okay, it's the one that makes it all happen. And with open type features, there are so many types of features that you can play around with. Okay. There are so many type of features that you can play around with. There is uh, even another one for, for randomizing characters, randomizing characters, whereby uh, let's say I've got this, I've got these two A's in. So if I'm now typing, let's say I'm typing a word document and mama, you know, what, what, so every time I type, okay, every time I type, automatically it changes the A on its own. So it randomizes the appearance of the A. And you can play around with that uh, to create like some cool, uh, so like some really cool fonts. And also another pointer is that uh, when you're now designing, uh, when you're now designing beyond, beyond the Latin, Latin alphabet, the ABCs, okay, when you're now designing beyond that, uh, certain writing systems, they don't work without open type features. Okay, they don't work without open type features. Writing systems like um, Arabic, uh, Angu, the Korean one, Hanzi, the Chinese one, Bengali, what uh, Nko from West Africa, uh, Tafinya from West Africa as well. Uh, when you're now playing around with those writing systems, you you can't, they can't, you can't tag with them without open type features. So when you start designing, if you are to design uh, characters or if you're designing fonts for those writing systems, uh, you have to know how to write open type features. Because the way the computers render text is different from how it's done with the Latin alphabet, okay? The computers were designed, computers were originally designed to write to the Latin alphabet. So it's very, very easy. It's just typing what at ABC. But then with the other character, with the other writing systems like uh, Bengali, Arabic and stuff, there are so many complexities, okay, within them. For example, with Arabic, um, a letter, a letter changes its form depending on where it appears, okay? so. For let's say you want to write an A, let's say A was in Arabic. The way A appears at the beginning of uh, a word is different in appearance, okay? Uh, when it appears in the middle or at the end. So in Arabic, you've got a different design for this initial letter, medium, and the final, okay? They call it the final, the last one, the last letter, okay? 
and also Arabic uh, letters join, okay? They join. So you also have different letters for joining. The way the letter joins when it's at the beginning, when it's in the middle, and when it's at the end is also different. So you need to write code for all of that. So that when someone is now typing, they just know, yeah, it's, it's just automatic. And unfortunately, unfortunately, it's very unfortunate that at the moment, um, uh, I think it's only Microsoft that has managed to, to have uh, a perfect render, rendering engine for Arabic type or any other writing system that's not, um, that's not Latin. So even as designers, if you're going to be doing work for, for clients whereby you have to type Arabic, uh, Angu and all those other writing systems, you have to make sure that you get someone to proofread everything, a native, a native, someone who knows that stuff. Because what happens is that uh, all those, all our design softwares, they can't render that type properly yet. So at times you might even copy stuff from let's say a document and when you paste it, it changes stuff, it changes stuff. Everything gets messed up, okay? So you have to get someone to proof it so that they, they, they can check if there are any errors as well. Yeah, so beyond, that's just about it. Uh, so taking more questions, taking more questions. Ah, another thing, uh, <clears throat> for, 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 if you're using glyphs, if you're using glyphs, if you're using glyphs, you're, you're very, very lucky. If you're using glyphs, you, you're very, very lucky, okay? Because glyphs uh, automates most of the code. Glyphs automates most of the code, okay? So you don't have to, you won't have to, to, to worry about writing so much code. So you, with glyphs, uh, although it automates the code, you have to know uh, the glyph naming like the, the character naming systems, okay? Because it automates based on how, how you name the characters. So for example, if you're designing for Arabic, you have to just make sure that uh, uh, you've named, your, your characters are named properly, initial, media, and final. And GIFs just compiles the code together because it knows that this one is the initial form, this one is the medium form, this one is the final form. So it just does everything automatic. But with FunLab at the moment, Eh, those guys are still very slow. They're still very slow. And if you're talking, if you're working with the Latin alphabet, eh, with the, and another thing with the Latin alphabet, actually open type code is just, it's just an extra thing. It's a luxury, okay? It's just a luxury. Your, your phone doesn't need to have like, oh, like the open type uh, features. If it's not a basic functionality, okay? Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Questions, questions, questions. Yes, we're coding. We're coding now. Oh, think typeface. Think typeface. Okay, that one. Uh, yes, yes. You may need to code that one. You may need to code that one. <laughs> you may need to code that one. And then. <laughs> You may need to call that one. And also another thing, um, another thing, if you're going to be designing uh, a font that connects, like those script fonts, you see the script ones, those ones, you need code. Those ones you need code, okay? Yes, you need code for those ones. The script fonts you need code. And you also need a lot of alternate characters, okay? You need a lot of alternate characters. Because uh, when you're designing script fonts, uh, I'm sure you've seen that most of the last letters, okay, like in, in a word, they have a swash, like a swash style, okay? So you need to write code for that to make sure that whenever uh, the E appears at the end, it is a swash. So you need to write code for that, okay? But it's, yeah, it's, 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 not, it's not difficult. It's, it's easy. And uh, if you need, I'm, I'm going to send, let me just draw that down. Uh, there is a pretty, good resource for learning the open type features. And it's pretty simple. So I'm going to send that as well. I'm going to send that at the end. 
and then ah so if you are using ai and 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 corel to draw okay <laughs> if you are using ai and corel draw <laughs> the thing is uh, you you can't do the code <laughs> You can do the code, okay? You can do the coding. So what you need to do is you can, you just drag and drop your characters in font lab or glyphs, okay? And then you you do you do, you do the coding part, you do the coding part in font lab or glyphs. And also, let me just quickly demonstrate uh, the caning part, the caning part, the caning part, the caning part. Let's say uh, I've drawn my characters in. And then now I need to export it. But before I export it, I need to make sure that the canning and spacing are proper, proper. Okay, I need to make sure that they are good. So one of the things that most designers confuse, they confuse spacing and canning. Okay, it's not the same thing, it's a different thing. They are two different things. And in type design, we are drawing these uh, characters. You have to make sure that the spacing Okay, the spacing uh, on both sides of your characters is equal so that when you start your canning, it won't be difficult, okay? So this is what I mean by spacing, okay? That, this space here, this space here, okay? You have to make sure that it's proper. And then when you're, when you're not canning, when you're not canning, so as you have seen from my weight, mama here, okay? I've typed mama, there's so much space here between the M and the A, okay? There's so much space here between the M and the A, okay? And that's because of the space, the, 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 the default spacing, okay, of the characters. And now I'll need to go and can, I'll need to go and can my characters. And that's another thing as well with the canning, because with canning you have to write a bit of code sometimes. And it's mainly manual. Okay, it's mainly manual. You can do the auto caning, but then uh, auto caning will give you funky caning, and designers will see fire with with using your font. Mm, okay, let me close that. Let me close that. Window uh, panels workspace. Mm, Just looking for the canning item. Okay. So if you check here, I've got my canning pairs. Okay, so canning basically canning. Canning is just the it's just the space, okay? The space between two characters only, okay? Space between two pairs, okay? So when you are when you start canning, you can in pairs, you can in pairs. You don't can like a whole word uh, like that. You can in pairs. So as you can see, I've got all these canning pairs, okay? All these canning pairs, all of these, 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 all of these. And these are canning pairs for all the characters in the font, okay? And what you have to do is you've got to set a value, okay? The, the value, I've got to set a value of each and every canning pair, okay? That's what you have to do. That's what you have to do. You have to set the value of each and every canning pair. So, for example, I'm going to use my weight again, mama. I'm going to use my weight, mama. So M and A. So as you can see there, if I write mama, Mama Baba. Whoa. 
since caning is just between two two letters, okay, just two pairs, okay. If I shift that, okay, it only moves between the M and A. That's caning, okay. Just the M and A, okay. This is the caning that that, that I'm that I'm editing, okay. And as you can see, on the B and A, it doesn't change anything, okay. It doesn't change anything. Nothing changes there. Whoa, disappeared. I canned it into oblivion, oblivion, into oblivion. Don't know why. Yo, disappeared. I canned it to 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 Mars, to Mars or something. Okay, and there we go. I canned the stuff to. To 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 oblivion. Okay. Um. Yeah. And that's the end. Yeah. In the meantime, can I as well take advantage? Um. How did you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once you're done with your fund, mm -hmm. right? Because ultimately, we want to make money. Yeah, you want we to make don't money. want to play around. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> because what I've, I've been reading around, eh? yeah, and what I've realized is I'm coming fresh. This is like my first font, obviously. Yeah. It's not, uh, it's like a record day boy, I'm guessing. Because mm -hmm. I've been reading around, I've been seeing that. Um, what do you call them? Um, uh, font uh, font sellers are very yeah. picky, obviously, because yeah. they want to maintain a certain level of uh, quality. Yeah. Um. So I was wondering, is there a way of doing it independently? Is there like a market for like independent fonts um, that you don't have to necessarily go to the big uh font uh, libraries okay yes super interesting question a very nice one a very great question okay so uh these days okay these days it's actually quite easy to publish your fonts uh independently okay it's very easy to publish your fonts independently because uh what used to happen back then was that most people used to sell uh through big uh, tab libraries like Monotype, my fonts, uh, etc. And those libraries, they have like these really strict, 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 strict rules. Okay. And even recently, with with uh, with the whole Black Lives Matter movement, certain things were were, were uncovered within the type industry um, that really diminished uh, the whole big library because it seems that it's, it's Turns out that most of those guys were actually um, intentionally stopping uh, other other upcoming designers from publishing their fonts. Yeah, but then these days it's now quite easy because, uh, for example, I use Creative Market. Okay, I use Creative Market. You, they don't have any standard or whatever uh, gatekeeping method. It just needs you and your your font. And you just have to create a shop and then you start selling your stuff. And then you just have to make sure that when you create your font, your first one, okay? Create your first one, you put it up to for sale. You have to market it, market it like crazy. Be it on Twitter, um, Instagram, Facebook, BNs, okay? And I think one of the most important uh, platforms, Twitter and Instagram, yeah. And you have to really engage, you have to engage. and you have to remember the people you're selling to. You're selling to designers, okay? Because designers are obviously your biggest market as, as, a, font, as a font creator. So what you have to make sure is that uh, you're in good relations with the designers around you. And you have to connect with more and more and more and more designers from all over the world, okay? Not just Sim Zimbabwe. And platforms like Instagram and Twitter make it very easy for that. They make it, it makes it very easy. And you just have to connect with people. You just comment, you itemize. And then when you release your first font, um, if it's not free, okay? If it's not free, 
and you've you've uh, released on on page of market you just have to follow up and check each and every message okay because usually when people buy I remember when i'm posting my first my first one ah people bought but uh <laughs> There was there, there was there was there was harsh feedback. You get it, yeah. <laughs> there was harsh feedback. Like people were saying, "Hey, this and that is not working. What what? Etc. 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 Yeah, stuff like that." But then, as for me, I didn't take that as you know, I, I didn't take that as something negative. But I just took up whatever they were saying, and I worked on it. And I'm even in good terms with some of the designers up to up to this time. And then. And then, yeah, uh, another thing as well is that after, after you release your first font, uh, I think it would be wiser for you to, fail, to start off by giving out free fonts. That's the best way to market yourself, giving out free fonts. Okay, yes, because those ones, although, although, although you don't make money at first, okay, although you don't make money at first, you find out that uh, free fonts have a wider reach, okay, in terms of getting yourself known, in terms of being visible, okay, especially on BNs, on BNs. And I've seen this uh, every time I post a free font on BNs, okay, it gets so much traction and there's so much visibility and people, the people, the, the conversion is, is serious, okay, like actual conversion, like the messages from other designers, the connections and stuff. It's real, but then when you post a paid, a paid, a paid uh, font, alpha, so like you get, <laughs> you get 10, 10, 12 people, you know, <laughs> no, no one wants to, <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, and you can see with, so it's, it's, when you check like the, what do you call them, the, the stats, the stats of your funny, of your pages and stuff, you start seeing that even on BNs, you you have like around uh, let's say a thousand a thousand views is it a thousand views or a thousand visitors to, to do your stuff but then only only twelve of them have, have have appreciated the project and then you start wondering now like hey okay but then with the free font item oh it's it's like hey I don't know it's so many okay so many people engage with free font and it's not a bad thing it's not a bad thing it's actually a good thing it's a way of getting you your name all day. And if, after some time, you start realizing that uh, even other people, even to this day, when I post free fonts, some people actually donate. They'll be like, ah, dude, this is nice, okay? I want to pay for it. Although it's free, but I want to pay for it, okay? Yeah, and that's when you know that uh, your stuff is really inspiring people. They, they love your stuff, okay? They love your stuff. And then another thing, once you're starting, if you're starting out, um, the type design industry at the moment, it's very open. Trust me, it's very open at the moment. And it's one of those industries where you can talk to the, to the, top, the top dogs in the industry, the experts of the experts, and they'll, you just talk to them like you're talking to your, to your, to your, to your, to your homie, okay? It's, they, are not, they are not scary people. And they've opened up uh, various platforms for you where you can get free critique on your first phones and stuff. And there's also a platform called uh, Type Drawers, Type Drawers, Type Drawers, that one, where people just post stuff and then they get, uh, you post your designs, you get feedback from all these awesome people. And they are really helpful. And for me, that's something that has really worked because uh, Type Design Education something is very expensive and even here in Zimbabwe accessing something like that it's it's an asshole so when I started out I, I just learned from people I was scavenging all over the internet you know scavenging because I really wanted to, to, to learn type design I, I was in love with the craft yeah so it's made of don't be shy easier don't be shy don't be don't be don't be closed in be open and share away. Share, 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 share. Everything you do, share. Everything you do, share. And uh, even at the moment, although the industry is open, there's, there's so little, so little resources on type design. So everything you share, you, 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 you never know how much value is going to bring to the industry and you connect with people. Yeah, so yeah.
that's much about it. Oh yeah, it is. Mm, yeah. Any, any any more questions? In Rodwin, yeah, you've designed a Mac, and you want to know if it's necessary to have it in the phone level fine tuning for fine tuning. Okay. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. It's very necessary for you to 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 put it to jump into phone lab and fine tune your 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 wet mark. Because 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 what happens is that uh, there are certain optical corrections that you have to make, especially when you are working with logo types. Uh, designers should get to know this because uh, once you start working with logo types, we're now living in a digital world. Okay, we're now living in a digital world where your logo has to work. Uh, on a billboard, it has to work on a small screen, okay, on a tiny, tiny screen, and it has to be visible, it has to be legible. So, what happens is that um, the same logo, okay, the same logo type, the same logo mark or word mark or logo type that you design for a billboard, okay, once you put it on, a, on that funny iPhone, I, what do you call it, that funny smartwatch, smartwatch thing, okay. Um, the legibility is affected, okay? It appears darker and it's quite difficult to read, okay? It's quite difficult to read. So what, what you need to actually do is that you need to create different versions of that uh, logo mark, okay? You have to create different versions of that logo mark. And uh, for smaller, if you have, for, for the smaller screens, okay, you have to make sure that it has a smaller optical size smaller optical size. So that means that you're going to be adding things like ink traps, ink traps, okay? Ink traps on all the joints of your letters. And that's, those are things that you can only do in phone lab or glyphs, okay? Those are only things that you can do in, uh, in font making softwares. And even the, the big agencies out there, they, they, they do that stuff. They actually commission uh, type designers to do that kind of work, okay? Just that kind of work so that it's displays proper on each and every device. And also there's also a process called hinting, whereby um, you make sure that um, the characters of, of your logo mark or whatever, of your characters, okay, your, your font, the characters of your font or logo mark, you make sure that they display nicely, they display nicely uh, on all kinds of digital displays, okay? From those uh, huge LCDs you see in what do you call them, in stadiums to, to your phone screens, okay? There is a process that called hinting that, that works there to make sure that it displays nicely. And uh, I wish I would say some examples, but I, I, I hadn't thought about it. I hadn't thought about it. maybe for another session. Uh, examples of of type that really looks bad. When it's used on, on on when it appears on screen, okay. Even a Vertica, the, the the most beautiful font, it can appear really weird, okay. If you get those funny pirated versions, and then you try to use them for something else, yeah, they they will look terrible. They look terrible, because uh, even when they are designed, they <laughs> they are designed with different optical sizes, okay. Some of them are designed for 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 text. Some of them are designed for text on, on screens. Some of them are designed for printing. Some of them are designed for pr huge printing on billboards, etc. So when you get those pirated versions, you never know which version you've gotten, is it? You never know which version you, you've got. And then you go on and you use it to, to print your stuff. And then it comes out funny. And you start blaming the printer. Ah, yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> So buy phones, people. <laughs> buy phones. <laughs> okay, any more questions? Any more questions? Oh, they, 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 they save. They save one. They save one. Uh, I, I, I ate him. It, 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 it closed down. It, 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 it crashed. So, it crashed. I need to get my money back from phone level. Because their 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 software has been has been crashing all the time. This guys. Okay, let me just demonstrate. Uh, 
<laughs> how to close that. And then another thing is, uh, I would urge you guys to start looking beyond the Latin alphabet when creating fonts. Okay, I would urge you to look beyond the Latin alphabet because um, in this age, there is a current revolution currently taking place at the moment whereby most, most nations, most nations are turning back to their own native writing systems. They're turning back to their own native writing systems. And the Latin alphabet is going to go absolute very, very soon. Okay, it's going to go absolute very, very soon. So you need to start, there's a new market rather for different types of writing systems. So <clears throat> you need to start to, uh, learning how to create Arabic fonts, Hangu, Hanzi, uh, all that stuff. It's pretty interesting stuff. And even for African writing systems, you've got Nko, you've got Adlam, you've got uh, is it be something like that from 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 essay? You've got some really interesting writing systems that are that are there already, and people are not creating uh, fonts for those writing systems. And it's one of the major reasons is because uh, for a long time, like I said, computers were made for uh, <coughs> the Latin script is the one that was uh, dominant within the com within the digital world, but then now various people have been taking up initiative of uh, improving the text rendering engines so that it can, they can support so many writing systems and they are slowly improving, they are slowly improving. So it's high time we start thinking beyond the Latin alphabet and that thing is just colonial, huh? it's colonial. It's not our thing, we also need something from Zimbabwe. So, 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 so you should, we should, we should, we should all aim towards that. Uh, and even if you can make something for Zimbabwe, you should also try support our African brothers. You should also try support our African brothers, uh, like the guys uh, who created the Adlam writing system. And uh, I'm I'm not sure if if you've heard about it, about the guys who created the Adlam 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 writing system. Okay, because those guys they did a really good job, uh, given the fact that most people. In, in West Africa, in Gambia, ETC, Senegal, most people couldn't read. Most people, a lot of them, they couldn't read because the Latin alphabet couldn't represent the true phonetic sounds of their, of their, of their languages, the Fulani people of their language, okay? And uh, these guys, they created an entirely new writing system and they started creating it when they were 12 years, at 12 years old, okay? That's when they started. And now they are now grown men, but yeah, they created the writing system and now people now know how to read and write because of that. And before that, uh, you used to have a situation whereby in a village, only one person knew how to read and write. And when they got a text message from someone, they would have to look for that person, that one person, so that they can read for everyone what the message is saying. And if that person wasn't there, then you'd never get the message. So it's small issues like that, whereby we have to also step up as African designers and do something for Africa. Yeah, and also even within, within our own languages, that's the only way that a language survives, okay? We need our own writing system. That's the only way a language survives. That's how, that's how the Chinese have survived. That's how the Koreans, the everyone else, that's how everyone else has survived. And if you check each and every country that is its own writing system, there's a direct relation to a very strong culture. Look at the Russians, they use this Cyrillic alphabet. Look at um, <coughs> the Chinese, they use Anzi. Look at the Koreans, they use Angu. Look at the Japanese, they use Kana and Argana. Look at, uh, look at the Ethiopians, they use the, 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 uh, the Amharic or the Jiz alphabet, is it? And look at uh, the Arabs, they use the Arabic. Look at the guys from, uh, from Iran, the Persians, is it? They use the same Arabic script. And then you look down, down here in Af down Southern Africa here. Ah, we, we, are, we are, we are, I don't know. We, we are, we are somewhere, we are, we are ah, I, I don't know. <laughs> we are just there, you get it? We are just there, we are just there. 
but then even like that there are some guys who are doing something there's uh there are guys who made a writing system in south africa uh the the tema tadinoko the tema tadinoko or is it basically so man something that i forgot the name yeah in south africa they made a writing system and it's surprising that they haven't taken it up uh up to this day and also another guy in malawi who created the Nguangwego script. I've been working on that for some time now. And uh, also, they haven't, they haven't taken it up. And it's mainly political. That's the problem with Africa. Once someone creates a writing system, it turns political. Is it? Yeah. So yeah, this guy in Malawi, he created a writing system. And then the current uh, Minister of Culture was there at the time in back in 1998. He told him that, uh, no, we're going to support this. And then change of government, and then another government came in, and then guy was seen as a political threat. <laughs> they thought he was up to some, he was on to some mission, you get it, yeah. So once you create something like that, it turns, it turns political. But yeah, we are working on that right now, and we're trying to get the, for the writing system encoded in the Unicode consortium so that it can be used on computers and other stuff. But yeah, it's a real struggle. And also even the guys in the guys I was talking about, the guys who created the Adlan script, uh, when they started, when they uh, started making the script and then it started getting wide usage within the Fulani people, they also got arrested and they had to flee to the USA. And up to this day, they are, they are based in the States because of that. And they are still seen as political threats, you see now. And even Gaddafi, they, there's so so many so many so much politics with writing systems. Even Gaddafi banned that uh, Tafinya. I, I'm sure Osmond I've, to, I've talked about it at one point. Yeah, he banned that Tafinya item in 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 Libya. And even in Morocco, they there are issues with it. And within Asia, in Asia, actually, people get killed for 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 writing. So there's cases of people who have been killed because they've created writing systems, because they come with so much political power. And, you know, there's always people behind pulling the strings. Once you create something like that, people see you as a threat. But yeah, we need to do something about it. But that's for another day, another session. I'm sure I'm going to talk about that. Yeah, I'm going to do a session on different writing systems, on writing systems, especially, especially African writing systems. Those ones, they, they need to be known. We need to know them and we need to create for them. So let me just uh, restore, yes, restore. I'm going to demonstrate how to, I'm going to demonstrate uh, how to save. Ah, there we go. That's why I love the the one thing I love about phone lab is that it just it's it saves my stuff. You get it? Ah, they it recovers my stuff. Ah, phew. Yeah. So let's say I need to save this now. Simple as file export font as current layer. Blah blah. We don't have any characters there, and then you've got several options. Okay. Uh, of saving. So you've got the open type, true type, and then the open type post script, and then you've got the UFO package. So the UFO package is this is um is just lines of code, okay? It's just lines of code. This one, the UFO package. And this one is mainly used uh if you want to edit uh like really behind the wood stuff, okay? Behind the wood stuff. This one use it and uh you've got the phone lab classic this one's for an older version holding for older version of phone lab and then post script type one this is one of the very first font formats okay before open type and for true type and post uh post script okay open type post script this one was the one that existed and then you've got your web tt web true type and web post script so web true type and web post script, these ones are your font phase, uh, font formats, okay? For the web, for the web. 
okay? You don't use the open type TT or the open type PS for the web. You use this web true type or web host script, okay? And the only major difference between op open type PS and open type TT, okay, is that uh, open type PS is the form is the font format that is the most recent. It's the most recent, and it supports uh, a lot of open type features without any problems. And also, you can have multiple multiple writing systems within a single font file since it supports up to it must be 80,000 characters okay so you can have as many writing systems as you want in a single font file and still it's not enough because you can't feed them especially given that Hanzi from China has countless characters and then design space UFO <coughs> This one is another code uh, type of uh, file format. And this one is, is mainly used by, by developers to inspect the file structure of fonts. And then open type variations. Open type variations. This one is your variable font file. Okay, your variable font file. Uh, I'm going to do a session on this. Let me just do this on writing systems. Writing systems. African writing systems, and then there are another one is going to be on variable fonts. Variable fonts. So I'm just going to demonstrate how you, how you do those, um, those those things, the variable fonts. And then once, so for this one, I'm going to select open type CT, then I'm going to export it. Ah, damn. So named problem. So named. So I'll just go to font info, font information. So within the font information, you can see all the details of the font, the file name. Okay, let's call this Mama. I love Mama. And then weight is regular, width is normal, slope is plain. So the the weight, you can just choose whatever you want, uh, depending on what you're designing. And then the width is it. Ultra condensed, is it condensed, semi-condensed, expanded, ultra expanded, etc. etc. But for this one, it's normal. Okay. <clears throat> then other, if you want to, uh, this one is used when you are naming. Um, let's say you've got a custom font. You are making a custom font, and you want to customize everything, even the names, uh, the names of the weights. Okay. So maybe you can call this Mama, Mama Africa, and that will be the the regular, the regular font. Okay. And then the board one will be called uh, Mama Zimbabwe. That would be the board one. And then, so you just write that in this other item. And then style regular full. So they just build names. Then it gives you full Mama regular, Mama regular, Mama regular. And then the master font master. It should be regular. Okay, it's a regular font. Then family dimensions. There's someone who was uh, asking about the EM units. Okay, the EM units. Uh, this is basically the size, the size of the font. Okay, the size is like the dim, the um, dimensions of the font. So the EM size of this one, for example, is one thousand. Normally, I don't, I don't mess with this. I just leave it as it is. Okay, because originally fonts from the beginning they were created with a EM size of one thousand. But then you can change that if you want to. And also, when you're creating fonts for other writing systems, like uh, other African writing systems, whether you've got uh, staked characters, where other <coughs> where you've got staked characters, you might need to change the EM size. And then ascend height, line gap, descend height, etc. Same with the font dimensions. The not internal designer comments. There you can leave comments. So that let's say if you're collaborating with someone, you can just leave comments there so that they can read and see whatever you've written. Then stems, zones, yeah, most of this stuff doesn't matter. Then guides, all of these. So the stems, stems, all of this stuff is uh, is for collaboration purposes. Okay, this is the stuff you leave for other designers if you're designing a your phone to someone, so that you just write the details of everything there, the parameters and other values. Okay. And then the font properties, creator, vendor. So if you're a registered vendor, 
uh, your, 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 your vendor ID will, will pop up there. I don't still remember mine. But yeah, I shall go and check it again. So if you want to be pro, you go to Microsoft and then you register within within Microsoft typography and then you register as an official font vendor. And then you have your own personal code. And people can't steal your fonts because your font will be digitally signed. So even if they edit it or do anything like that, if I open the file, if I open the font, I will still see that eh, they stole my font. So you write your name, what, 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 etc. Everything, creation date, version. Then the legal part, the legal part. You have to consult your lawyer here. You have to consult your lawyer for this. Or even if you don't have a lawyer, you can just um, you can just fill it in. Just get people. So yeah, you've got your copyright. You write your copyright, and then the trademark, and then if you have. If your license is on the web, you can put the website there, and then the license, the, uh, the, the details of the license, you write them. There. And then we've got the code page, the code page, the code page. This code page is not the code, like code, code. <laughs> the only thing, okay? This is just uh, the code page it shows the writing system that the font supports, okay? So they put Latin 1, Latin 2, Eastern Europe, Cyrillic, Greek, Turkish, Hebrew, Arabic. Windows, Baltic, Vietnamese, Thai, Japanese, Chinese, Simultai Chinese, Korean, Wansum, traditional Chinese, all of that, Korean, Jonap, etc. It is, it is a lot. And then Unicode ranges, again, it's got to do with uh, the Latin, the writing systems that your, that the font supports. Then the X's, the X's, uh, you mainly use X's, masters, and instances when you're designing variable fonts, okay? So I'm going to touch on these three. The time, the next time we're going to look at variable fonts. That's when I'm going to touch on these three. But then, that we've named our font mama. So we can save it now. File, exporters, current layer, it's called mama and we export it, blah, blah, blah. It's been exported to this document in documents, okay? It's fine like that. Yeah, so that's just about it. That's how you save, that's how you save, that's how you save. I wish I could have more, <clears throat> more time, more time with this. We need to do more of this. I'm thinking uh, maybe Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, I think Tuesday I'll have another session. I'm, 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 I'm interested about this stuff. Yeah, so Tuesday, <laughs> Tuesday I'm going to have another session. Tuesday I'm going to have another session. So I, I think I'm, I'm going to be having a session every two days. I don't know, till, till I knock out. Yeah, stuff like that. Uh, if you consider writing articles, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I've written, I've written, I've written, I think two, three articles, yeah, on, on, on my medium, medium, on my medium uh, platform, on the medium platform. And yeah, they've gained a bit of traction, they've gained a bit of traction. Creative Exchange start using it. Yes, 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 yes. We can get away with that, definitely. We can get away, we, we, we can get away with, with the writing system. It's, it's very easy. <laughs> it's very easy. We, we just have to convince people to use it. We just have to make something that's, that's very easy. That's very, very, very easy to use. Because that's, that's the, <clears throat> that's the uh, foundation of a good writing system. It has to be something that's very easy to, to use. And actually, um, I think almost all writing systems are, are quite easy. And even the Latin writing system we use might be the, one of the most complicated, might be one of the most complicated writing systems in the world. Uh, although it looks simple because we've been using it since, uh, since, since, I don't know, since, since birth, it's actually quite very difficult especially given the fact that 
it doesn't do its job properly. It doesn't do its job properly. It doesn't at all, not even at all. Because uh, <clears throat> the thing with writing systems, like with the Latin writing system, uh, it was designed for a specific language and not our languages, not Shona, not Diveli, not Tonga, not Nambian, what, not what. So what happened, what happened is that when these guys uh, created the orthography for, for Shona and Diveli and all the other indigenous languages of Zimbabwe, they, they enforced this, <clears throat> this writing system uh, and it had limitations because it doesn't represent all the tones that you find uh, within, within our languages. So for example, if I'm to say, write the word Nzara, Nzara is in Hungary, Nzara, is it? And then I'll say, write the word Nzara, is it? Nzara is in Neo, Neo and Hungary. Uh, when you write them with the Latin alphabet, they all look the same, is it? They look the same, but when you speak it, it's different. The tone is different. It's Nzara and Nzara. Even the A's, the A's are different. I, I, I forgot the actual names for, <clears throat> uh, if you check the IPA, the IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet, you actually see that uh, the way you pronounce those A's is different. Even the way from how we speak is different. And the way they're supposed to be represented, they're supposed to be represented differently. So. Uh, these guys came and forced this Latin script onto us, onto our languages. And even to this day, uh, these languages are slowly dying. Although we're not noticing it, they are slowly dying because we can't even, uh, <clears throat> we can't preserve them. We can't preserve them. We can't invent new terms or uh, new, new words and new terms uh, along the way because it's limiting, it's limiting, especially given that we are using the Latin alphabet. It limits us because it becomes too difficult for, 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 for people to, new, to, to learn new words. And it, it's, it's also confusing, especially I've given you an, an example, Nzara Nzara. It's also confusing for someone to, to write records. Uh, when you're now writing, now keeping records, how, how do you know that uh, uh, it's Zid Nzara or Nzara, is it? So it's something that we need to definitely, definitely really look at. And then when you look at now these other writing systems, they look very, very complex. Like the Hanzi, the Chinese one. The Chinese actually use Hanzi because their language is also very tonal. It's also very tonal. It's actually tonal more than, more than, more than Shona. Because for Chinese, like for example, Ma, if you say Ma, Okay, they put the ma, 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 ma. And uh, that word, I remember ma actually is about eight different meanings. Eight different meanings. So for these guys, it would be difficult, it's, it's impossible for them to use the, the, the Latin alphabet to, 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 to write uh, Mandarin. So these guys, they, they actually use that Hanzi and it's actually logographic. It's a logographic writing system. It doesn't represent tones because you can't create something that represents tones. You'd have a million characters to be able to cover all the tones that they have. So for them, they use a logographic writing system whereby um, it uses uh, uh, ideas. So all those uh, writings you see, they're actually ideas, okay? They're actual ideas and pictures and logos. They are logos actually, exactly, they are logos. So th that's how they communicate. And for them, they, they know how it works because there are some funny combinations and stuff. But once you start looking at it, it's very easy. It's very easy to understand. Very, very easy. Very, very easy to understand. In a way that you, you could even start reading Chinese, you just have to know <laughs> like a bit, a bit. You just have to have uh, a bit of context. And even the Korean angle, the Korean angle is actually said to be the, 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 the perfect writing system because with the Korean angle, if you learn it, you can learn it within a day and you can start speaking Korean once you get it. You can learn, learn it within a day and start speaking Korean. That's how simple it is. Because it perfectly, it perfectly, perfectly represents each and every sign 
So how you see it is how you speak it. All those funny, funny circles and funny squares. Once you get what what that funny circle means, what that uh, stroke means, and then just put it together. Those are just syllables, okay? Those are just syllables. So once you just get that that part on it, you can speak Korean, proper proper. You can actually read it nicely, and you only need like a month or so of studying for you to probably get it. So it's some of these things that we usually overlook because uh, we've grown into into the Latin used to the Latin alphabet and stuff. But yeah, those are just my ramblings of of a type guy, <laughs> of a font design now. Nah. So <clears throat> any questions on on anything? Mm, and also, uh, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, decolonize, 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 decolonize type design. Yes, decolonize type design people. Please, please, let's decolonize it. And actually, I, I, I was actually pained when I was when I was when I was talking about uh, <laughs> like how, how how to design these characters because I actually wished if, if if it was if it was the African writing system or something I was talking about, or even uh, in terms of the standards of how to create type, you find that most of the type design education is just all on the Latin alphabet. Latin, 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 Latin. There's nothing, it's, you really encounter something like teaching you how to design the Ethiopian, the G's alphabet, or the Adlam or the Nkoa alphabet. You never come across stuff like that. And most people don't even know anything about that. And uh, when I started working on the Nguangwego project, I've been posting on Twitter some of these, uh, some of these, some of the uh, snips from the process. And some people are actually shocked that, you know, in Africa we have we have our own writing systems, and it's something that really <laughs> that really opened up <laughs> my eyes to it. And uh, if you're using glyphs, if you're using glyphs to design, you could really have a huge opportunity because those guys are looking for someone um, who who can help them. Who can help them better their software so that it's it's optimized for African writing systems? So if you start designing uh, your African fonts with glyphs, be sure to get in touch with the guys. You just take them, or whatever you post. You just take them in a post. I actually wanted to work with them, but. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not, I'm not really well versed with, with, with clips, but I'll, I'll just, if, if you happen to start working on African writing systems, just let me know and I'll connect you to the guy. Yeah, because those guys are focused. They want, to, they want to start making tutorials. They want to start to optimize their, their, <coughs> their software for African writing systems. So yeah, that's just about it. And also, decolonize, 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 decolonize. I, I, I love that statement. I love that statement. <laughs> decolonize everything. <laughs> decolonize everything. Decolonize type design. Decolonize type design. Yeah, we, we have to be the driving force behind this. We have to be the driving force behind it. Because if not us, then who? If not now? Then when, yeah, when time is moving, the world is changing, we shouldn't be left out. They left us out at one point, but this time we need to make sure, we, we need to take charge and, and also be at the forefront. I wouldn't know if those who target. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That's another thing. Mostly, those people who target the the, 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 the typographers, yeah, yeah, definitely they're sponsored by the West. Ah, it's all the West doing. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Because 
those guys, they, they see it as a threat. They see it as a threat. It's a huge threat, I tell, I tell you. You can even see it with the, with the, with the Chinese. Um, I'm sure you've seen, you've seen pictures or you've been um, to, uh, you've seen pictures or even in movies of Chinatown in the States. Uh, and you've seen that uh, all the shop signage and everything there, it's all in Chinese. It's all in Chinese. Guys, that's a very, very powerful statement. And that's why that guy, Donald Trump, is filming, because they can feel the presence. There is nothing that shows presence like that stuff. I'm telling you, that stuff is presence. And when those people see that stuff, they feel it. They feel it that, no, the Chinese are here. You get it. They know that the Chinese are here, and they are here to stay. And just small things like that, small things like that. And China actually is, is actually made that. It's actually one of their weapons of, of, of their new imperialism was wherever you see, everywhere you go, uh, even here in Zim, even here in Zim, they, with the long chain, what, 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 they are starting to put up all that funny handsy stuff. And even in, uh, there's another country, what's this, Nigeria. In Nigeria, they now, there are some areas where they've been putting um, signage, like road signage with, 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 uh, Hansi characters as well. And I was just like, what? What? In Africa, in Africa, Nigeria, you know, you have English and Hansi road signage. I'm like, damn, damn. You know, the, the fun thing is that Nigerians, they have their own writing systems, but they don't even bother to, to, to they, they, there's another girl right now. Right now, as you speak, there's someone who created in, in recently created a writing system for, for, for Igbo, for the Igbo people in Nigeria uh, called, it's called Ndebe, the Ndebe writing system. And <clears throat> she's been getting backlash from, from, from fellow Nigerians. They'll be like, ah, a a anyone can draw those funny, those funny letters. I'm like, what? <laughs> and they're like, ah, you are now the, the mother queen, the authority of the Igbo, of the Igbo language. Ah. I'm like, these people, dang. Like, hey, who are you? You don't have any authority over the language. What, what? Ah, ah. And I'm like, dang. Yeah, it's real. So it's, it's a struggle, you know, it's a struggle. Especially for, 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 for us Africans, because we have to fight our own brothers at, at home and we have to fight the West and we have to fight. We're fighting from all, from all sides, from all corners. You know, enemies are coming from all corners of the world. Yeah, anyways, any more questions, people? That's supposed to be 30 minutes, but hey, it's now. <laughs> and I'm loving it. Yes, I'm loving it, people. Can I, can yeah. I be devil's advocate? Mm -hmm. um, with with the Chinese uh, writing system uh, signage in, in Nigeria, I don't know how rife it is in China, mm -hmm. but I saw something else happening in, in Europe. Yeah, the same kind of thing, but this was different. This was more to do with the payment systems. You know, this whole automation yeah. uh, of payments. Mm -hmm. So they've got separate payment systems uh there's got the visa for europeans who are in yeah. europe mm. and then there's the chinese one so yeah. what i've realized now i think the world has become so global and governments are trying to cater to chinese tourists yeah so you you find they, they'll they'll say yeah they'll, the chinese government will obviously be like if you want our tourists then you have to make uh concessions so that our people can be able to navigate your country yeah. and see where they are going and that kind of thing. It's a form of colonization, I guess. But, yeah. You know, if you, if your government then thinks, ah, we want man, then yeah, they, they give in. <laughs> they give in. So yeah, I guess that's what that is about. Yeah. But it's interesting. It's interesting. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, you brought up something interesting there. Because I think at the end of the day, it's all about uh, accessibility. And the fact that they're actually catering for those, for those, for those Chinese people, uh, giving them their own payment platform where they can make their payments. It's actually good. 
so that's part of the thing that I was talking about about uh, how how the Latin alphabet is slowly becoming obsolete because uh, now people are realizing that no, there are other people there who don't know how to read the Latin alphabet. There are other people who know how to read uh, other writing systems, and now they are now catering for other <coughs> uh, for, 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 for for other cultures as well. And that's why I find that even big brands right now, uh, they now have alternate branding for, for, different, for different countries. Because even if you go to China, they've got an alternate logo for, for the, we beat Colgate, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and what, what, what. That's set in the, in, the native, in the native writing system of those particular countries. And it's something that's changing. And that's something that we need to look out for as, as designers. We need to look out for that. So at the, end of the, at the end of the day, it's all about accessibility, making sure that everything is accessible to everyone. And I've also seen in states, in the states uh, with the recent elections and stuff, what, what, the voting, the voting systems as well. They have, I think they have five different languages, I think, within, within, within their, their signage and stuff. Because they have Chinese, they have uh, Russian, they have Spanish, and they have English, and I think they have uh, in Arabic, exactly, in Arabic. So you see now, it's, these are things that, uh, that are slowly changing for, for better accessibility, so that everyone can be able to communicate uh, thoroughly in whichever way they are efficient. In. Boom, boom, yeah, that's good. Any, um, any. Um, yeah. One point there. Um, hi guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think also. I think also like the writing system also um, link with language. Yeah. Um, like for example, I'll use. I think I'll use one of the most important languages right now like for this example. Yeah. Um, Afrikaans. Afrikaans. Yeah. Um, Afrikaans. If you go back before, I think it's 19, 1944, 1945, before the whole apartheid thing started. Mm -hmm. It was literally regarded as they would call it um, a kitchen language, oh, okay. uh, meaning that it didn't have much syllables. It wasn't that big, like literally, like mm -hmm. it was even smaller than uh, Shona or Zulu, literally, yeah. because it didn't have other words, mm -hmm. right? And because they had to create a system to say, cool, we've been, like the Afrikaans people, we've been appraised by the English, right? So we are going to invest in this language and in this writing. Yeah. Both both in, in speaking and writing and science and in technology, yeah. right? And, and most people like really don't really, um, they only see um, apartheid as the oppression of black people, but then they don't see the other power that came with language and writing. There was yeah. like another subtle layer that, that, that was plugged in that, that, that South Africa might not be even able to, to um, like um, reclaim that. Yeah. And then what they did was that they then forced Afrikaans speaking and writing and they started developing it in sciences and chemicals, whatever, whatever, technology. Right now, you can learn any subject under the sun, even, even astronomy, whatever, in Afrikaans. Because yeah, yeah. during our first day, they were developing and working on that language to point with by. And, and um, um, because literally, I was supposed to do my master's in... Um, in um in um, um 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 the way of language yeah like the way of language and design right for example all of us here i'm pretty sure 99 percent of us when we when we th when we think we think in english however english haizi our mother languages yes yeah, all of us right our mother <laughs> language is the best one now but because, but, but because we now learned, you learn type in English, mm -hmm. learn design in English. Now I'm thinking in English also, think of ideas in English. Yeah. You see, so for example, in, in Zim, they'll think a radio ad in English and then convert it in Sean or Zulu. <laughs> if we are Sean or Zulu, you see. So then like, the Afrikaans were able to literally develop a small language to a big language in terms of writing and sciences. So now, right, there's even a school, a university where you go to, like, well, I can actually say 60% of universities in South Africa are actually Afrikaans, 
right? And like, like, like some schools literally will tell you, this school is Afrikaans, you see? So even, even though we'll need to push in terms of writing systems, but you also need to push like in terms of, is it Shona, is it Ndebele, right? And, and of course, in, in Sh like even with Shona, it's a broader term for other Manika languages because mm -hmm. there's like a lot under the term Shona. So it's also that. So for example, if you're gonna say, cool, now there's only two official languages or three or four, right? And English is last, right? And we're gonna be using those as a writing system. Yeah, that way we'll be able to learn Shona, learn sciences using Shona, learn medicine in Shona, learn design in Shona. That way it will grow both ways. Because yeah. for example, now if you, if you push a writing system alone, what are we writing? Are we writing English in that thing or writing Shona? So, like it needs to support that. Like this writing system is yeah. this Shona, but we now need to develop that. Now we're writing this, using this system to write a thesis about technology, about nanotechnology, mm -hmm. using this writing system to write about um, AI. Like, when, like what is AI in Shona? Like, yeah. like it needs to go like the same way, right? Nanotechnology, space, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah. Ah, that's deep, man. That's deep. Dang, that's deep, that's deep, that's deep. And yeah, like, mm, that's some deep stuff. That's some deep stuff. And uh, I've seen a similar pattern. I've seen a similar pattern, uh, like, with what you're saying, with how they pushed uh, Africans and they managed to develop it into something, into a language that could be used, that can be used right now for literally anything. Uh, I've seen it with, um, with, with the French, with the French. The French have, uh, they have something that they call l'Academie Française, the French Academy. Okay, and this, this is one of, uh, it's like an organization that was, that was started uh, it was started back in the 1800s, I think, 18, 1700s, yeah, back in the 1700s, uh, with the aim of, of safeguarding the French language, safeguarding the French language. And up to this day, uh, these guys, what they do is, uh, they're the ones who, who, <clears throat> who manage, like, uh, the addition of new words in, into the French language, EDC. And they make sure that uh, the, 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 the French language is up to date with whatever is going on in the world. So even uh, they take influence from music, from like literally anything, from music, from other languages, from anything that's, that, that's influencing the world right now so that the language doesn't die. And even with, with, with French now, we also have wait literally for, for, for like everything, everything, everything. And with French, it's actually amazing because there are other ways that you can't explain, that you, that you, that you can find in English. Like there, there's no direct translation to English. There's no, it doesn't exist. You, you can only explain it in English, but you can never find a direct translation. So yeah, it's stuff like that, that we need to look at. And like you said, um, in terms of writing system and merging it with the language, uh, we would have to work with a system which, uh, whereby the writing system, the writing system, uh, when you look at the Bantu languages, the Southern Bantu languages, the languages here, here in SA, in Zim, in Malawi, in Zambia, in Botswana, all the way up to DRC and Madagascar. Uh, you realize that uh, these languages all have the same structure. All these languages have the same structure. So what happens is that uh, with, for all these languages, you could easily create a writing system that can write literally any language within the Bantu, uh, within the Bantu family. So uh, for example, there is one that I'm working on, the Mwangwebo, it can be used to write any language within, within the Bantu writing systems, within the Bantu family of languages. And then we've got the uh, Chema Tsa Dinogo from Essay. That one is, so it can be used to write anything from Zulu to Soto to Shona to anything. 
literally anything. And then you have another one from from GRC, uh, which is called Mandombe, Mandombe script. That one it can write any language. That's how good it is. It can write any language perfectly. <laughs> and the only downside is that it's it's too complex. It's way way too complex. It's way way too complex. And they've been trying to they've been trying to to encode it into the Unicode consortium so that it can be used. But actually, uh, it's been a slow process because the current technology that's being used right now, there is no way of rendering text using the current technology. So, so far, you can only write it by hand. There is no, you, you, you can't, you can't, you can't use it on your computer yet. So yeah, if we were to create a writing system, I think um, <clears throat> we'd need something, we'd need something that would be easily usable uh, with our indig indigenous languages and not something for English. Definitely not something for English, not something for English. If we want to create something that will really work for us, it doesn't have to work for English. And if people have to use it, it doesn't have to work for English. Otherwise, if we create something that can work for English, then people will end up writing English with it. Yeah. And our language is, will still die. <laughs> <laughs> They'll still die. So, so we need to make sure we need, yeah, we need some something. Like that. I, I don't know. It's, 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 it's really, it's, it's a dream. I don't know. It's a dream. Rodwin, we've been talking about, we've been talking about this, the writing system stuff, but I, I, I've been, <clears throat> I've been a bit busy, and I think I need, I, I need to learn a bit of linguistics so that, so that I get to fully understand. Um, the, the, the world of writing systems. But it's so something that's very complicated because even most people, actually most people who have created writing systems are not even linguists by, 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 by professional qualification. They're just people with a dream. Like the Adlam guys I told you about, they started creating the writing system when they were only 12 years old. So they were still kids when, when they made it. And it's one of the most uh, functional writing systems as well for the full And yeah, so, Something where you just need to have a dream and you, 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 you create it. And for some, for some, for most African writing systems, they actually started it as real dreams. Yeah, that's for you. Like people had dreams and they just woke up. Like the Mandombe, the Mandombe one, I, I think it was a dream as well. Some guy dreamt of it. It was the writing of the gods. And then he woke up, said drawing it. And then the guys in Nigeria again, uh, the Nispidi, I think again, yeah, he, 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 he dreamt of it. And he woke up one day and he's like, the girls showed me their writing. And he started writing. <laughs> yeah, so it's stuff like that. So yeah, <clears throat> we'll see how we have to do. Yes, in adding new words in Shona is looked down upon. And I think that's, that's because uh, we don't have it all points back to our politics. Okay. Yeah, it's our politics. Our politics is messed up. And I, I actually came across uh, some proposal by some by some professor, some which was done some time ago. I think in the early two thousands, uh, and it was a proposal to 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 to, to revise the Shona writing system because he spoke on on how it was it wasn't it wasn't feasible. To represent all the Shona words, and actually, a lot of Shona words actually died out already. They are already dead, because uh, right now most standard Shona is is, is mostly Zezul. It's mostly Zezul, and then all the other four or five dial dialects that were in, that were involved, that are included within the Shona standard, they were practically sidelined. So. All of those uh, dialects, they are practically dead at the moment. And you, that's why even uh, <clears throat> if you look at the Shona examinations, uh, they are, the pass rates are quite low because most students, they don't like from, from different parts of the country, they, 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 can't, they can't write standard Shona. They have, their own, they, have, they have their own Shona, like their own dialects. And when they write, you know, the people who, who mark, to them it's wrong Shona. Because that's what they've been told, that it's wrong Shona. 
So it's something that uh, we need we need to work on. I don't know something. Yeah, yeah, we, we can we can pull it off. Sure, we can pull it off. <laughs> Um, I also think um, if you look at uh, Menon Zichi, um, I think it also goes back to Nyaye. I don't know if you've ever seen issues of Ndebele versus Shona, mm-hmm. um, especially pa, pa Twitter and, and other platforms. Mm-hmm. I think that's also one of the things that we will be able to address if we handle the writing systems properly. Mm-hmm. Because Ukatarisa, it's been very hard. Like, like Susu, Inini, I, I, I've never been taught um, Tebele. I don't know Bukura, anywhere near um, Tebele and all. Um, but somehow, I feel like I, I could have, I was just um, supposed to have just learnt it. You know, it, it wasn't supposed to be something like a luxury or something. As, as I was growing up, just like any other language. In Israel, I'm substituting Shona and, and English. Mm-hmm. Where I'm, I'm even supposed to probably be saying Shona probably and the Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think um, having a, a, a writing system, you know, you know, those um, languages. Um, makes it easier for us uh, yeah. to to learn uh, both languages, or in fact, not both languages, like all the languages um, are within the Bantu um, language uh, tag. So I, I think that's uh, it would be a very good move. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. Yeah, totally, totally. It makes sense. It makes perfect sense. So the, that's that's what is to happen. Like having a writing system that represents uh, all the indigenous uh, languages that we have in Zimbabwe, because that's the only way we can do it. Because creating uh, a writing system where where it only represents one language, like Shona only on Devele on the I to be problematic, I there will be problems. There will be problems. Yeah. So we need something, and also if we have writing system, a writing system that represents all languages, it can also work as a unifier for, for, for all, 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 all tribes within Zimbabwe. And, you know, people can actually relate to each other. And if you use the same writing system, it's, that's custom designed for your languages, isn't it? It's much easier to learn other languages, other languages within, within that, within that spectrum. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, yeah, stuff like that. I'm I'm I'm, I'm I, actually trying to think of a country that that did that that did something similar. But I'm not I'm not fine. Yeah, China. China did something similar. China. China mm-hmm. did something similar. China you you used uh, Hansi. Hansi. In in China they actually have a lot of writing systems. They have a lot of writing systems. But the one that they use right now, one that they use right now. Um, <clears throat> They use the there's the simplified the simplified Chinese the simplified Anzi and then the the traditional one and the simplified one is the one that's used in mainland China and then the traditional one is used all over and they actually had to do that because uh, since they have a lot of writing systems they had to do something that 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 everyone around the whole nation could understand so although and that's one thing that's unique about China. Right? Although they speak different languages, okay? they speak uh, different languages like Cantonese and stuff and stuff and stuff. They can all read Hanzi and understand it, no matter what language you speak. You get it? They can all read Hanzi and they can understand it perfectly. And I think that's, that's one case because it's a billion people, it's a, more than a billion people. <laughs> So I don't know. <laughs> they, they, they definitely yeah. had, had to do something about that. And <laughs> and um, um, TJ Pablo, I was also thinking, could he, you know, it's uh, it will make it even easier. Um, because I I like way back. I think I've discussed it with someone about branding Zimbabwe, like mm. branding it as a whole. 
uh, I think it's easier to brand a nation when you have a, a system that is coercive like especially in terms of writing yeah. you know ya gara ya button is one through language yeah um it's easier now to 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 come up with an identity from from that yeah because at the moment um if you think about trying to to brand it um uh, as it is pa gara pa ni some some divisions um that need to be addressed mm. and i think the only way to start addressing them is through the writing system and then to choose it an identity um out of that you know so yeah i think it would be a very good opportunity for us to 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 use that uh, into branding the nation because ah, that's one thing that needs to be done as soon as possible even the flag <laughs> <laughs> ah the flag hey 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 show some love people show some love <laughs> Rodney, Rodney, <laughs> you clap for him. You never know him. Hey. Yeah, he. Tironga de parapa. Tiri seven. Parama siya e woy papa. Parama siya e woy. Yeah, this, this guy is in South Africa. This one. Between yes? these two in South Africa. These, these two in South Africa. We need to hear something from Bainam, please. Bainam. Bainam says, she said, Zanu must go. Hi, guys. There's nothing to say here. Yeah. I'm just here watching and listening and enjoying. I've thoroughly enjoyed this talk. We need to have more of this. Thanks a lot Sebastian. That's great. This is great. Ah, you're welcome. You're welcome. And thanks for seeing all the other guys. Good to see your faces and know who's who and to know who the C10s are. Man. Who are not. Is hey. This is stuff I'm coming to collect it. <laughs> ah, all right. Ah, all right. I'll make a plan. Now I'll make a plan. Okay. Ben, I'm in I'm definitely it, not a C10. It, in, I'm definitely not a C10 Ben. ben I'm. We were together when the, when the when the army was marching against us. We were together in that. Yeah, I've got photo evidence. <laughs> ah, guys, the only C10 here is Ozzy. Ozzy used to have dreadlocks. Ah, yes, ah, yes, ah, yes. Okay, people, people, people. Okay, so any more questions? Any more things? Oof, yeah, need to get a haircut. Ah, uh, <laughs> for me, for me, for me, every every time I I speak to you, Seb, yeah. I look at my font and I'm like, ah, <laughs> this thing is not ah, no. <laughs> I, I I I edited it again, and I was I was thinking now I'm ready, you know. I had even moved on to move to to making a a different weight. Mm. So I thought I was ready, but now I'm thinking. Uh, ah, you, you shouldn't doubt yourself. Like, uh, please, you just said that. That's from somewhere. And I, and unfortunately, unfortunately, the way I was doing it as well. Mm. Yeah, unfortunately, the way I was doing it as well. The outline. Oh, you know how you did your like yeah. uh, you you basically drew a line and then you played with the weight mm. i think i should have done that it would have been easier okay i actually was drawing the whole thing so uh, but i'm I, i think maybe i'll just release it um, as a free as a freebie yeah so yeah we'll see <laughs> yeah proper you, you just have to you just have to release it you just have to release it because uh we we all start from somewhere we all start from somewhere so the most important thing is just releasing it and then you get feedback from there and then you move on from there that's the best way to go about it 
in another way. Ah, there's no like proper, proper, correct way of 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 doing it. Because the, the way the way I was just showing you is the way how is it's, it's how I do it. It's how I do it. But uh, there are several other ways you could do it. It's just a matter of just exploring and then finding out what's easier for you. Because you know, drawing all those characters is quite it's quite a hassle. Like it's a, it's, it's a lot of work. So you just have to find something that works for you. Something that's that makes everything we, faster. We, which brings me back. Mm. Which brings me back. Mm. This freebie thing is it's really paining me. Oh, the freebie. <laughs> <laughs> You, you see, now I'm, I'm paying for my sins now. Remember, I told you that I'll pay for my sins of, of, of pirating. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. <laughs> hey, hey, now it's paining me because I'm thinking hey, it has been months, but it's been months of editing this. Thing. Oh, okay. Now I'm thinking just to give it away for free. Hey, hey, hey. Um, oh. what I wanted to ask is mm. like on your phones, haven't you experimented with like lower pricing at least? Because that's what I, that's one uh, uh, way I was thinking of. Like, if I release it for like a very low price, yeah. Um, so, because uh, mine is uh, is also a display font. It's, I think it's very niche. It's not okay. going to. It's not going to be for everyone. That's one thing. That's for sure. Okay. So, yeah. I see. I see. <clears throat> so, what you need to do, and Mm. Hey, freebie, freebie. Okay, you, you don't need to, to give it out as a freebie, okay? Uh, don't give it out as a freebie. Sell it as a, as a cheaper price. <laughs> okay, yeah, so it, like uh, my recent release, um, Tapa. Tapa is it's cheap. It's five, five bucks. Five bucks only. Isn't that, that, that That's what I decided to sell it for. But uh, you know, like with, with font making, it's more it's more of a passion thing, and uh, yeah. it's more about the it's more about the impact that your font is going to is going to do, and less about and less about the money. Yeah. But if you earn money, yeah. you, you can make something for money. Hey? You make something for money. Yeah, yeah, but I I I I do get you. I do get you. It's it's, it's really yeah. you have to be passionate because this uh, this thing I've been cunning this thing. Bro. Hey, and you know, the funny thing about it, the funny thing about it is after, like, I think the last time I talked to you was about a mm. month ago when we did, when, when you, yeah, when just about before you released them tap. Mm. And I was like, then you showed the samples and I was like, I, I looked at mine and I was like, no, 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 I can't do this, this thing. This thing is looking ugly. No. So I put in another extra month of tweaking, tweaking. And now you're like sitting there thinking, ah, should I release for free? No, no, no. <laughs> free is just, it's bugging me. So it, at least maybe even like $2, at least even a dollar. Even. Uh, cause yeah. That, I, I'm feeling the pain now. Now I'm, I'm, I'm realizing the pain how piracy is bad. Piracy is bad, guys. Piracy is bad. <laughs> Listen to me. Piracy is bad. <laughs> yeah, piracy is bad. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, yeah. So, I, I, you know, if you if you if you're so concerned about releasing it for free, uh, try get some kind of even if you release it for free, have people to to tweet it before they download or share it before they download, so that it's so there's some kind of value that you're still getting back from from your font. I'm I'm still of the opinion that it's it's still okay to to release it for free because it's 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 better off being released for free than it just sitting on your computer and you're editing and tweeting it for the next four years. It's better to take it out there for free. People download it. People know about you, and then and then you also improve. You're not going to improve that that front, and then you can always come yeah. back to that front to take it off for free. And and make it a paid font when you when you um when you have um, improved it because that's what I'm doing. I'm going to take off some of my free fonts, improve them, and then put them up back for sale. Mm -hmm. But this is after five years since I designed that first font. So mm -hmm. so yeah yeah. I, know I, it can be I paid think 
<laughs> yeah, I, I think I think you're I think you're right. I think I, I think I'm just gonna have maybe I'm just gonna it's, it's painful, but I think I'm just gonna have to just put it out there. Because you know the the irony of the irony of it all is a lot of free forms have inspired uh, me to, to be like ah, okay, let me get into it. So uh, you know sometimes you get to a point where like where you start thinking um, I'm trying to make money off this thing simply because I'm in Zim. Maybe, maybe I should just. Read. I'm, I'm between two, two, two worlds essentially because part of me is also like saying you know what just put paid forward you, you've had a lot of free funds in your lifetime and they've made you money so maybe it's time to also give back let me give you another idea I was talking to Sebastian about this and this is something that I'm also looking into uh, what, what, what's your mainstream of work what's your mainstream of work well, what do you uh, mean you get right now? I'll say branding. Uh, branding, yeah, my dream. So, so yeah. it's branding. So, here's an idea. This is what I'm also doing. Uh, pay yourself for the font that you're doing. Um, you say, okay, my font. Um, if if I came to you and I said I want you to design a font for me, how much are you going to charge me? You're going to charge me 500 bucks. So now you pay yourself to design your own font that you want to experiment. So, so you say it's going to cost 500 bucks. Your client, push that cost to your client. So any branding job you do, you say, okay, for the next five jobs, I'm going to add an extra 50 bucks. Nah, I see. I pay see. I see. For me I see. You. I, see. I see. I see. And then you, and then you, you, even that whole two months you're taking or the extra month to tweak, you also kind of give yourself a time frame because it's a job that is being paid for. So you're going to mm. work on it and finish it. And, yeah. Yeah. and then if you, if it sits for the next 10 years, at least you paid yourself to do that mm-hmm. 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 yeah that's deep I think yeah that that kind of solves my 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 problem for me actually yeah yeah and actually I, yeah you know at the end of the day uh, it's not like it's the best font out in, out of you know <laughs> in the world it, it's it's a I, I would like to think it's a decent font um so I think it's all fair it's only fair that I I just give it out there and let people use and then tweak it and whatever. Yeah, proper stuff, proper stuff. I think you've been answered there. You've been given a very, very solid, solid, solid answer. <laughs> solid one. Yes. Gerkai. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'm Gerkai. So, in Nini, I've got, I've got a lot of phones. I got Gara, right? So you need a problem, you're getting nine the E, right? Yeah. I every single thing that I create somehow upon a Buddha font. <laughs> like somehow it's like a kiss on every single thing that I design. Mm. Somehow upon a Buddha font. However, usually this font is usually uppercase. For example, we can talk about the the, um, the last the Mandela um, one, right? Mm. Literally. A to Z, uppercase, and one to zero. Done. Right? And, okay, so I need, here's my thing. I don't like to Godzilla. I don't like to Godzilla, my lowercase. Like, literally, it's like, like, I'm, like I'm more fascinated with the uppercase. So, so, so usually, I can create something in a day, of course, in, in Illustrator. Done. Right? So the thing is that, and I lose interest quickly. Like I lose interest quickly. Like done. Cool. Move on. Move on. And right now, when you're talking right, I've got this nice, beautiful phone. Like beautiful. Like it's. I think I sh- like I shared it. Like um, how many phones have I shared with you? I think it was Think. Think. Did I share you this other one, which is like muscles? Like. No, 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 it didn't. It didn't. I didn't show that one. Ah, oh, that one is nice. That one is nice. <laughs> but it's upper key. Like the numbers are quite nice. Like the shapes. Like it's. And, and somehow I designed it by mistake, literally, right? And 
So like, I'm just thinking of releasing my phone side, adding my uppercase. Because my lowercase. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, so, yo, yo, yo. But then, but then, that's the thing, right? Like, 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 like for example, for Think, for Think, there was an idea first. It was a, it was a logo design, and then the branding, and then, and then I created this new typeface out of the logo. That was dope. And because of your advice of coding, um, even though I got by Darwa, um, um, I was able to charge a client a lot of money for that. Mm. Of course, literally to give them the, the rights and every single thing. But I was looking at it the other day that I might go back and just because the whole typeface, you might even just say that it almost adopts the Arabic flow because every single letter connects because that's a concept. So then I might need help with that. Well, technically, I will need help with all of my typefaces. Um, <laughs> especially this one that I've just finished, right? Yeah. I think it's fine, right? I think I can release a typeface in. In my upper case, right? Yeah. I don't think that's a bad thing. Right? I can, right? Okay, cool, sure. It's like a eighty ball. One question answered. Um flip. What was the other one? Yeah, like okay, cool. I use I use font self. I don't know if you've used font self. Yeah. <laughs> I've used it before. I've used it before. But right? I, 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 I don't know. Seb is laughing already. <laughs> exactly. Like, like Seb is, this is what Seb is saying, right? This is what Seb is saying. This is what Seb is saying. Like, guys, like, you're coming to me with font self. Font self is like Coral Draw to Illustrator. <laughs> No, you must feel the pain. You must feel the pain, right? Yeah, but but then I paid for it, and I think it's I think it's good on itself. But yeah. then I think when it comes to um, yeah, I think it's for the amateurs. Sing mm. Yeah, but then I think I like what um, I was checking the price. Yeah, yeah. Your software is like 200 bucks, and I could see like the quite difference because with Fontself, it's a drag and drop. Um, Photographer, which I used before, was quite complex, very complex and quite rigid. But yours feels like quite, quite soft and quite easy to, to, to move around because Photographer was hard. Like that was my first time designing fonts. Never taught. This number did this squat, and literally it was like a nightmare using it. But, but somehow I managed to. Like fig figure it out, um, but I think I think he, he to say I think um, I might try and I might try and get this one, um, even though uh, for itself is quite easy when you work with Illustrator, just drag and drop, <laughs> drag and drop, and there you go. <laughs> <You're done. laughs> but yeah, but yeah, also and also thank you for the seminar, hey, like like it's yeah, um, yeah, it was um, amazing, cool definitely, cool yeah, so. Font self is not it's, it's not terrible, it's not terrible. It's it's actually a good software, especially especially if you're if if you're starting out, uh, and if you don't want any complicated stuff, it's actually a good software. Yeah, because it's super easy. Just draw your stuff, drag and drop, draw, drag and drop, draw, drag and drop, and blah blah blah. Export, you're done. You don't need any complexities. But 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 a big but. The thing is. Uh, when it comes to all those other features, like open type features, what, 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 canning, etc. Ah, it's not your so your software for all that stuff. Like basically the, the production process. Because what happens with, with font making, um, I'll say 20% of the whole process is the drawing of your characters. And then the other 80% is the production stuff like the canning, the spacing, the open type features, etc. The testing and proofing and what what etc. Uh, so that whole production process is something that you can only do in font editing softwares like FontLab or or Glyph or Glyphs uh, or any other <clears throat> the other so uh, font editing softwares. Like uh, Font Forge, there's one called Font Forge, but that one is very raw. It's, I don't know, the, the UI is messed up. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really messed up. 
and then there is another one called Robofont. But glyphs, Robofont, um, they are all end robot. Yeah, end robot. They are all make only, make only, make only. So you can't get them on Windows. But in those ones, they yeah, they they are, they are, they are, they are said to be the industry standards, cause most tech designers use Mac. They don't use Windows. Yeah, ever since PhoneLab started messing around, because PhoneLab was the standard back then. Uh, Photographer, the one used to the one used to use, it's actually part part of PhoneLab. It's, it's a PhoneLab software. Yeah. So all of those softwares. Like you said, photograph was very difficult to use. That's one of the major reasons why Glyphs was actually created. Because these guys came with a vision that they wanted to make something that was easier. And it's only recent, 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 like last year that PhoneLab first updated, uh, made a, a, a new update of their software, like in years. And that's the one I'm using now, the PhoneLab 6. And it's the one that's uh, closer to Glyphs in terms of simplicity and more functionality, yeah. So that one, PhoneLab is quite, PhoneLab Glyphs, yeah, sorted. And PhoneSelf, if you want something that's, that's quick, because it's just drag and drop. And it also works for Photoshop now, I think, yeah. They now have a Photoshop plugin as well. So even if using Photoshop, if you're creating, a, what do you call these fonts? <coughs> Color fonts, exactly. Color fonts in Photoshop, you can easily create them as well. And as uh, as for your typefaces as well, another good idea I have for you is you could try making color fonts, color fonts, like with the Mandela one, like with the Mandela one. As you've seen, it works like with the colors that it is. So I think if you make it, if you create it as a color font, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. So that whoever uses it. Uh, it still has that original, original vibe to it, original essay vibe to it with the essay colors. And it's also free. And it's also free. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and to be also free. <laughs> yeah. And another tip for for for, for free fonts. Uh, <clears throat> what you would actually do when, when you are listening, if you don't want to 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 sell it for free, yeah. <laughs> if you don't want to to let it go for free, what you could actually do is. Uh, you could export two versions, a paid version and a free version. So your free version, we have, we just have fewer characters. Or maybe let's say your, 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 your free version, we have just the uppercase, lowercase, and the basic punctuation. Is it? Yeah, like that. And then your, your paid version, we have everything. And it's simple as that. And that's one of the quickest ways of marketing as well. Because once someone tries it, once someone gets the, the free font, tries it, and loves it, they can then buy it. It's easier that, that way. Yeah, because font, font games, it's just a matter of trying, trying, trying fonts. That's how people buy. That's how people buy. If they don't try your font and see how awesome it is, eh, eh, eh. You, you, you starve. You starve to death. <laughs> you starve to death. And also, in terms of pricing, um, Pricing fonts, it all depends with um, not how your font looks, but how it works. Get it? It's not about the looks, but the functionality of your font. That's why you find that uh, you have fonts uh, that cost up to twenty-two thousand. I think Din, Din. You, I'm sure you're all familiar with Din. Din costs like twenty-seven, twenty-seven thousand US dollars. Yeah. The full phone family is 27k. The full family. <laughs> the full family is 27k. Yeah. Cause... Oh, but yeah. <laughs> like, maybe like, or like 10 characters or like, like 10 weights. <laughs> the full family is like 27k. And when you look at the functionality of that of that typeface, it's it's amazing. It's mind blowing. Because it has Everything, everything, everything. There are the type of typefaces that you can use to to typeset even a, a science a science textbook because it is it will have like everything, literally anything you can write. Every symbol you can write. Every symbol you find in in, in the science world, in in mythology, in Greek mythology, in what what you find. There are clues for that, is it? So you find each and every character for that. 
all of, all of those characters, and then even uh, signage characters. That's why Dean was as well as Mindy is mostly used for for signage. Yeah, because um, because of its uh, unique, coherent icon and text. I don't know whatever equation that's there, and also it's been tested. Yeah, those guys go to extreme, extreme, extreme lines. Yeah, they've actually tested it. Like they've done some visibility tests and all that stuff, like actual experiments whereby people drive past signs and they blare them and they do all kinds of experiment to find that it's the perfect signage typeface. So when you're pricing something like that, ah, it doesn't go for free. <laughs> it doesn't go for free. It's really expensive. It's really expensive, it's really expensive. And also uh, writing system coverage. It depends like how, how many languages are covered with your font. If it's just your basic Latin, then ah, it won't be expensive. But then if it's the extended Latin, uh, extended Latin with other writing systems like Arabic, um, you just have to aim for languages. If you want to make money, you have to aim for languages that are mostly used. So you make sure that it supports Arabic and Anzi or Kana or Angu, since those are the margin. There are a lot of people there, isn't it? Lots, lots, lots of numbers. And those people pay. They pay for phones. They pay for phones, those people. So, yeah, you just have to make sure you get that. And when you make it, you have to, it has to be consistent in, 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 in it. And all. Because one other thing is that. Uh, uh the initial the first fonts isn't the first fonts to, to to support the arabic writing systems or rather another the first the first fonts to support another writing system that not that that's not uh the latin writing system uh they, they are actually fonts that were created uh separately as in it's just a font that is arabic only or a font that is anzi only no latin so what used to happen is that if you're a brand and you're a multinational brand is it and let's say your brand typeface is Helvetica. Um, when you're writing, when when you're typing stuff using for the for the general Latin uh, item, you'll be using Helvetica. But then when you want to write stuff to your Chinese audience, you, you have to look for another font. Is it since Helvetica doesn't support Anzi, you have to look for another font. So. What you should aim for is creating a font that is multiple writing systems, so that even when 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 uh, brands such using a font, is it there is a coherent look and feel. It looks like the same. It's, it looks the same, like the characteristics, the way the caves are made and all that stuff. It's all flowing. Know that it should look like uh, it shouldn't look like these two different fonts. Although it's two different writing systems, it should look like one font. I'm sure if you look at uh, most of the branding in in Saudi Arabia, yeah, they've managed to do that. In Saudi Arabia, in UAE, Dubai, etc., they've managed to, to to do that. Whereby you have got uh, these compositions where where Latin, the Latin and Arabic, they look they look unified. They look like the same. It's all the same. Like the Abu Dhabi. I know if you check that the Abu Abu Dhabi logo. For the eye, if you check, if you look at it, it's, it's nice. It's nice. They've managed to to unify the Latin and and the uh, Arabic writing system perfectly. So yeah, that's just about it. That's just about it. That's just about uh, it. Also, I'm now officially uh, anti anti Latin over so. <laughs> I also like the the Qatar um, yeah. branding that was done by Grid. Yes, 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 um, yes, yes. That one was really dope as well because the one they they like. Um, did the, the Latin version and then they they did the Arabic, but at the same time everything was like, Yeah, exactly. You, 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 it was very coercive. So yeah, yeah, it's it's actually nice. And even if you check the the one for Ethiopian Airlines, uh, the Ethiopian Airlines logo, yeah, that one is is, is nice. The one with the Latin and in the G's alphabet. Yeah, it looks coherent. Because it's, it's that typeface. I, I, I forgot the name of the typeface. It's called what? I forgot it. I forgot the name. Yeah, but it's, 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 it's a perfect example. 
of a unified um, font that supports multiple writing systems. So if, it's, if your font supports multiple writing systems, you can actually price it for <clears throat> a lot of money, a lot of money, lots of money. Or you can let it go for free. <laughs> Gary Kai. Yeah. Gary Kai. Yeah. Let me ask you, let me ask you what, uh, what no one wants to ask. What yeah. is the most expensive font that you have ever sold, right? That you've ever done? Yeah. And then also, um, like, who are your clients usually? Like, 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 do you have people who commission you to make typefaces all the time? Um, like, um, how do you make your money? But first question is, what was the most expensive typeface that you ever designed? Yeah. My most expensive typeface, the most expensive typeface I've ever designed was for 25 US dollars. <laughs> 25 US dollars, 25, 25, <laughs> 25 US dollars. Yeah, that's it. Uh, it's, it's so that, <clears throat> it's so that I, I, I don't know. It's so that, but I feel like uh, there's more that, 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 that I have to do. There's more work that I have to do in terms of uh, creating something that's, um, that's really crazy. Wait, wait, wait. I think, I, I think, I think uh, what what we should focus more on is not so much what was the most expensive. It's more to do with like uptake, as in where is the price point where people looked and said, okay, for this font, I'll buy. And then you got a lot of buyers. Yes. Because um, I think that's what generally happens with with, yeah. with the with the in, with the font with fonts and stuff. Um, the, I've because I've seen some fonts which are really nice. It, 300 bucks for the whole family and you're like hey but 300 bucks if i go to my client and tell him 300 bucks they'll be like hey hell no especially in but um for someone if you tell them like five bucks maybe you end up getting like maybe 50 people buying a five buck font that may definitely will make more money than the 25 buck font yeah i don't know yeah so yeah, sorry go ahead i think yeah. I think I think my question was based on commission, right? Like for example, oh, okay, commission. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Like commission. Like for example, this typeface. Like for example, if I, mm -hmm. if I were to say, "Cool, Gary Kai, I'm working on this brand, right? And yeah. I need, um, I need a certain typeface. I really can't find any typeface out there, right? Mm -hmm. Um, this this typeface is gonna be owned by this client. Oh, okay, okay, right. You see, yeah, because in that case, you can't charge 25 because yeah, no, that's no, like no, life. No. It can't be 25. No, 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 no. Exactly. Because you're literally giving away the license. It can't be 25. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So in, in terms of uh, like actual commissions and actual commissions, the highest, the highest I've actually priced was 1.2. Okay. And that, that was a client in, in the States. And surprisingly, it was... Uh, I got that when I was still starting out, <laughs> like in, in the in the early 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 days, early days when I was just still posting my stuff on PNs, and then some some lady from the states just helped me, and she's like, "Ah, uh, I really like your font. Uh, I would like something like that. I like something some something similar. Can you actually create a font from for my brand, etc., etc., and and we create the stuff." But yeah, I think that that was the very very high. That was the peak point. And now that I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm sharpening my skills more, I, 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 I'm actually hungry for, for, for those type of, for those type of, of opportunities. But yeah, I, I've been getting I, some here and there. Like, I, I hope, I hope you won't charge us more. One thousand two hundred. No, 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 no. <laughs> it, 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 it depends on the region. It depends on the region because definitely someone, someone in the states, <laughs> for someone in the states, oh, one point two is. It's, it's close to nothing. Okay, it's something, but it's not. It's not much. It's not much. And but, but Kai, yeah, in Indian undercover CIO, yeah. charge about one thousand two hundred, or else just Varisa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's charge on, it's charge on. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. No, no, no. For no charge. No, for no charge. No, for no charge. We need, we, need, we need to charge more. We need to charge more. So, yeah. uh, um, I actually, mm. I actually think uh, I'm going to to start engaging you more 
because I noticed kuti pane zvese zvandino ichaka zvandito realize kuti I should have been engaging you um, to actually achieve the perfection and then in chida chai chai um like for example so i started up on the portal as um my word marks um yeah um which i actually think um i will need to to really look at it could be whenever i design something um in any for me it was just okay it's it's type um chini chini basa kwa ndiri most of the times was the icon Ah, it is a like a nice icon does it work as a five icon does it work as this, 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 this and all that stuff and it but then on the type side i never really paid it paid much attention to it so i think because of that why well, you've sold um, you you've marketed yourself to me <laughs> and i'm probably <laughs> i'm probably going to be one of you <laughs> your first client <laughs> yeah <laughs> So so I really like that concept uh because because I I really feel good the chin probably that that there was just lacking and uh, I think it's something that I could also use to upsell um my 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 projects to my clients as well. Yeah yeah definitely definitely. Thanks man and uh don't worry it's it's to be to be a thousand points. <laughs> So I I also I wanted to say something I did. Yeah. If um on the issue of pricing, you know, you know in design pricing is always is just one of those hit and miss things sometimes. Um but um but we we definitely need to value ourselves because there are also clients who will just look at something and because it's free or because it's low priced, they won't deal with you. they actually yeah, yeah. just start dealing from a certain price range going up so it's something that you have to like you said that it's based on region and um and most of the time if people just see that you are you are you are organized they'll accept a higher price even ba- coming to basic to something like somebody asks you for a price you send them a uh, a formal quotation that has uh, terms and conditions at the bottom I've noticed that when I started doing that more clients started paying me on time and also accepting whatever I quoted them. So even just that uh that perception it's a perception but even that perception uh, makes a big difference in 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 pricing. Yeah, that's very true there. Wait, 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 wait. That's very true. Because even uh, it it happened to me uh, uh, some time ago, some time ago. When I, when i praise someone uh they, i charge them my charge them they wanted the font yeah and, and that person was from from the states it, it was actually before before the the the, 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 the high paying job and i charged 300 300 bucks i said 300 yeah 300 for a custom font and so, <laughs> you know <laughs> At first I didn't get it. At first I didn't get it. But then I I actually started realizing later that uh she ended up not taking up the job and she was like, "Ah, can you send your your ID what what? It is it is." So the thing was <laughs> I just realized that she, she told us like, like one of those one of those guys, one of you those You're <laughs> cloud. <laughs> yeah, one, one of those guys, you know? African <laughs> prince. Mama Kemal. <laughs> 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 like, yeah, so <laughs> you know, whatever you say, guy, whatever price you say, yeah, it really it really is anything. So some people will be, will be pushed away because of that. Cuz they will doubt you. Cuz I think the way she saw my work and she's like, ah, it's it's actually nice. But then <laughs> when they said my price I was like, mm. <laughs> it's like Can you send your ID what what can we have a, a Skype call I, I need to see your face what what <laughs> and you know, I was like ah. then after that she 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 just disappeared she just went silent then I was like okay it's only okay like after you also that when I was now reflecting and thinking that ah this is what happened she didn't trust me though like she didn't even not even one bit because my pricing was eh, it was that was just too low too low to be true too low to be true <laughs> um yeah um 
Gary Kai. I yeah. think I think I'm gonna touch touch on touch on um on um on Rodney's um on Rodwin's a uh, point, right? Um um and I think for me usually um when it comes to logo design, right? Yeah. Like I really suck when it comes to logo design. And and sometimes I really can't land the plane because I, I overcomplicate things. Sometimes I'm trying to simplify it. But I think I think if there's one thing that I've always struggled with across my thing, it's the canning, right? Oh. And and for example, right? And sometimes um like sometimes the like the rule of thumb or whatever whatever is that if if the space looks equal, like like sometimes there's no mathematical measurement of it. Sometimes it's just if it flows nicely. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I think I might also take up on um, on Rodwin's idea of um, sometimes when I've done something, just to give it to you since you're the top guy and literally um, I check if the spacings are, are right. And and of course, charge me. Um, and literally, and, and also since now um, I'm using like most of your type and then also suggest if the spacing or like the, um, the, um, the type is too small, if I'm, we're gonna shrink it. Um, yeah, so literally what I'm saying is that I think I'm gonna be working hand in hand, even though I've bought the type, type some of your type, but when then I commission you to like for this help, you then need to call me um, to say cool shop Ozzy. I think this might be like a, like a one hour consultation um, um, to look at this, 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 yeah. You see, and then it's a collaboration. You see, yeah. Yeah, the, the, how's that? That's awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Collaboration all the way. <clears throat> that's 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 how we 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 we, we can move from from on collaboration all the way. And I've also realized that even with the with the big artists and say the pentagrams and stuff, um, <clears throat> there's a there's a lot of collaboration happening. Like there's a lot of stuff happening. Uh, Especially that's how I got to know about uh, the whole type designers and how, how they work on logo masks. Because before that, I didn't know. I just thought these guys, they just make logos and, you know, it's done, it's done. And, you know, you submit and all. But then the more the more I started getting connected to the type world, to the type design world industry, that's when I started noticing that, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's more than just, it's more than just drawing type. Even small, 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 small things, small things like, like you're saying, like canning and all that, and all that stuff. Because even if you check, uh, most of the typefaces that we even that we even use, the ones that are there out there, the futuras, the verticals, the avenues, etc. Uh, they are not perfect. They they are not perfect. Once you set it in a logo, there are some times where you've just where you just feel, ah, let me just let me just move move it a bit. Let me just scan it. Let me just do this and that. Yeah, it's all those things because they're not, they not all perfect. Depending on the way that you're going to write, uh, there's always going to be that, that small, small mistake or that one thing here you need to fix. And it's also, uh, yeah, and it's something that, you know, we can collaborate on and we figure stuff out and we make stuff work. And we make great work. <laughs> yeah. Super, super. Any, 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 any more questions? It's been three hours, eh? Three ah, yeah. hours. This has been fun. Damn. Yeah. Fun. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah. I think for today um, we've, we've covered ground. <laughs> if, you, if you think I'm going That's anywhere, I, I'm not going anywhere, guys. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> what I've learned today, what, what I've learned today, moral one of the story, your first typeface must be free. <laughs> hey, shit, be free. Hey, guys. <laughs> free this way, bro. Yeah. Free I, I wanted to say something, guys. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Prompted by what, by what Sebastian said when, when that woman said, send me your, your photo. Uh, I think it, this this might sound very basic, but I think it's also very important to have a professional profile photo that you always keep. Um, so that for instances like that, or for your LinkedIn profile, they need to be a professional. Yes, we're artists, but there needs to be a, a yeah. professional photo um, so that people don't judge you on 
on a photo mm -hmm. that uh, that you produce. So just in this, I'm sure you've got photo photograph photograph friends. <laughs> I think because maybe you just put it like ah, nah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 very true, very true. Uh, presentation matters, presentation matters. <laughs> professional, professional all the way. Because uh, people will judge you based on on, 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 your, on how you look and stuff. Yeah, so presentation matters. Professional shoots. Do you have any photographers there? Any photographers? Any professional shoots up? <laughs> Samuel. Samuel. I don't have Samuel. No trouble, guys. No. Ah, <laughs> dang. Uh, um, we'll speak, we'll speak yeah, to Sam. Joe. Um, I wanted to ask something. Um, don't go digress on the channel from whatever that we're talking about. Um, um, this is this might sound like a very silly or simple question, but yeah, I I've just thought about it. Kuti, what is your your process when when you when you're creating fonts? Do you like sketch them on paper? Like, how do you even start? doing fonts like if you want to come up with something that's like totally out of the box what do you do or how do you go about it in fact including us and everyone else okay so <clears throat> for, for my process it depends from from time to time it's not it's, it's not a one time one time thing uh especially in terms of how i start it all starts differently it all starts differently. Sometimes I start off by sketching, like an actual pen and paper, and I don't I don't sketch out the whole thing. I don't sketch out the whole uh, uh, the whole alphabet and all, all of that. Usually, I just sketch out a word, and then from that word, I just get I just get um, I just get two or three characters that will form the basis of the whole font. Yeah, like that, like the chapter one. Uh, I, I, I should have done something, but I, 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 I wanted to show you guys like uh, some the initial initial sketch of the of the whole font. I think it was it was three words. I think three words only, and then I just got from there. I just got the I, I got the B, I got the E, and the M, and those were the starting points for 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 the whole font. And then most of the stuff comes as you go along comes as you go along and uh sometimes i start in i just start making stuff in front of it's a matter of just drawing 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 just trying practicing and then something will come up something will come up along the way something will come up along the way and at times it's through logos when i'm working on logos for some funny symbol and then i just find ah if i do this and that and that and that i have I have a letter, I've got an A, I've got a B, I've got a what, and then I use that. But yeah, it's quite different. It changes from, from time to time. I don't have a set proper way of starting. But in terms of the whole process, like the way, the, how, how I work, the whole process from start to, to finish, that's where I can say that I have, I have a, proper, I have a proper, proper standard. Like starting from, from the sketching, etc or the drawing of the initial letters i move on to the canning and spacing the canning and spacing and once i'm done with that i work on the open type features if any if any i work on the open type features then create create open type features then after i'm done <clears throat> i export test with all tests then back to the drawing board Edit, 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 edit. Export, test again. Edit, edit, edit. Test, edit, test, edit. And it's like that until I feel like, yeah, I'm, yeah, this is, this is the proper stuff I want. This is the proper stuff I want. And that's why you see that uh, fonts usually take longer.